Yeah, the plane take off. Right. Let's start this then, shall we? Hello, captains. How's it going? How is everybody today? Is everybody having a, a great day, a groovy day? I've got to make sure that you guys are going to see everything here. So let's move that over so you guys can see. There we go. Got to remember that. So yesterday, just to recap in case you're, you're coming in new, um, we looked at the difference between Rex Skyforce in version 5.1 and Active Sky in 5.1. And I demonstrated how uh, you can get insanely realistic photo real weather skies by using a combination of the both and you don't actually need active sky to have like deal with the weather it doesn't actually need to introduce live weather uh because basically rex does that and the the, the cloud layout the cloud structure everything looked a lot better with rex involved than it did with just active sky or even default default looks the worst of course as it always does active sky you know looks better but it only like puts the the, the live weather in doesn't it it doesn't have textures um when you're using true sky and nor does Rex, but for some reason the textures do look different when Rex was involved. I don't understand it. Um, the textures did look different, I thought. Go back and watch um, and let me know. So, so today we're basically diving in the, the settings, the menu settings, the uh, NVIDIA graphic card settings, also going to show you how you can profile your your simulator so um for instance example i have true earth orbex true earth and it completely tanks the simulator even on my system it completely eats a lot more memory um than it should um like double the amount that it nor the sim would normally use and it also um it uses a lot more GPU VRAM as well, which if you haven't got like a good system or if you've got like a media, medium system, it's just going to completely crash your to desktop all the time. Um, but if you can really da lower down your settings, you can get it to run and then you can save a profile and call it like True Earth Netherlands. And, um, and then you can use that setting whenever you want to go fly and then go back to your normal one when you want to go fly somewhere else and you're not using True Earth. So it really helps you maintain a frame rate. And for me, having a certain frame rate is, is really important. It really is. Having a set certain frame rate, you know? Um, because... If your I feel if your frame rate is jumping around, it's it's not going to be smooth because of the way a flight simulator deals with FPS, as opposed to drive logs, um, as opposed to how a game deals with frame rates. A game deals with frame rate differently to how a flight simulator deals with frame rate, and so I think you have to sort of treat your PC differently a little bit. Nice to see you too, mate. So. We're going to go through P3D menu settings. I'm going to show you uh, what I usually use, why I usually use it, and what works for me. I'm also going to go through my NVIDIA control panel. Now, if you're running an AMD card, you're going to have a totally different control panel, but you should have a control panel. I've never, ever used an AMD product, so I don't know. I really don't know. 
Um, so I'm sorry. I always use NVIDIA graphics cards with flight simulation, just like I always use um, Intel CPUs because the core of this software is from FSX, which was specifically designed around that, that technology, and it runs best with it. Um, so I always use these things. So I don't use AMD or I don't have any Ryzen cards, uh, Ryzen CPU, sorry. So... So for me, I think it, P3D can run with both, can run just as well on an Intel as it can on a Ryzen, but you might, I find that y you might find little, you might find that it runs better on the Intel than it does on the Ryzen. That's what, that's my experience anyway. You're right, Tom. Nice to see you too, mate. Um, just like I feel that you, it's going to graphically run smoother on an NVIDIA card than it will on an AMD card. That That's just experience. Like, people, everybody who, like, I've spoken to, like, who use this over that and have a very similar system to me don't get the frame rate or the performance I get. So the 5800 is better for version 5. Do you know what? I don't know if there is a particular card that is better for flight simulation. As long as it does what you need it to do. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I need it to keep it as a consistent performance. I need it to last. I don't need it to be the best because this is old software. And it, and because it's old software, it kind of has to have like a legacy to deal with the hardware as well. Anyway, I you know. It's, it's not like it. This isn't like it's a uh, hardware war type of thing. All I'm stating is I use NVIDIA and Intel um, and that's what I'll be showing and demonstrating today. So anybody who's using AMD or uh, Ryzen, then I, I don't use those products I never had, so I really can't give any advice on that. You know? So I'm really sorry, like, if, if, if you're coming in and saying, oh, I've got issues with this and I've got that, I, I don't deal with the, that hardware, so... Um, I'm limited in my help then, you know? I don't want to give anybody wrong information. I don't want to give anybody information that's going to nuke their sim. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, do this, guys. It's all right. And then suddenly it crashes your PC or your simulator. That's that's not help. Do you know what I mean? That's bullshit. So I don't bullshit. So I'll uh, give it a couple more minutes, and then we're going to go through all my uh, graphic card settings. I'm also going to go through with you and there is a video explaining it so i won't i won't repeat it but there's okay there's three components to your pc right three hardware components your cpu okay uh your gpu and your memory okay and all three of mine i have personally optimized for flight simulation okay as well as the operating system itself it's aimed for flight simulation, okay? It's not aimed for being a gaming computer or, you know, an accounting computer or a studio uh, working in Photoshop or, you know, sort of a developing PC. It's for flight sim only. So I do play games on it, though, um, and they always maintain really ultra-high settings in every game I play, but um, it's a flight sim PC. Do you know what I mean? You've shaved your hair now. Karate training. <laughs> Yeah, I used to do karate. I remember that. I missed that. Anyway. And if you want me to go through in a future video with how you can streamline your operating system, there is... I've done a video about performance that sort of talks about it, but it doesn't go into great detail. Um, but if you want, we can do that as a future live stream. What I do today at 7 p.m. is going to be done every single day from now on, okay, for like the next month. I'm going to be live every single night at 7 p.m. to answer any questions anybody has about 5.1. Like, I, I go through the P3D forums every day. I go through Facebook groups every day. I go through Orbex, uh, UK2000 forums, and I and I look at people's problems, and I see that there's a lot of people having crash uh, to desktop issues, or they're having, you know, bloom and brightness issues, and I think a lot of that can be solved very simply, you know, like the brightness issue, 
you know, if you haven't got a HDR TV or monitor, don't use HDR in your simulator because it's not going to display correct colors. Turn it off. Turn off all the HDR, okay? If you still want to use True Sky, you've got to edit your CFG file to turn off the HDR because unfortunately, HDR and True Sky are linked in the simulator. So turning off True Sky deactivates your HDR or gives you the ability to deactivate your HDR. But as soon as you then turn True Sky back on, it ticks the box again. So they're kind of linked, but you can deactivate HDR and still use True Sky by editing the CFG file. Um, I'll show you my CFG file as well. We're going to go through that. We're going to go through um, the volumetric cloud file as well because I've altered settings in there, which um, somebody, a uh, developer, contacted me and gave me those settings to test, which I did, but then only last night did I realize I'd bloody put them in wrong. So I put them in correctly. You know what I mean? You're off to bed now. All right, mate. Take care. Um... So I've put them in correctly now and we're going to go into the sim and we're going to have a look at the default weather and then also lo load up Active Sky and Rex as well and see what the difference is. So tomorrow we're going to be talking about the scenery library and how you can use add-ons to save your sim, okay? So if you want to see, um, if, you want, if, you, if you need to talk about your scenery library, the ordering of it, how you use it with Orbex and your other add-ons, and how you use XML to save your sim, tune in tomorrow night at 7 p.m. because I'm going to be demonstrating that as well, as well as troubleshooting your, your problems. So if you've got any problems or any issues, please, please let me know. Just ask me in the chat and we'll troubleshoot it together, okay? So anyway, let's crack on. So NVIDIA graphics card, I've got two monitors, as you can see. I've got a 22-inch LCD, which is what the camera is sat on and the chat is using. This isn't a HDR TV. This isn't 4K. Uh, well, there'd be no point in having a 22-inch 4K. It would, it would be overkill and ridiculous. Um, it doesn't even actually do full 1080p either, and it only has a refresh rate of 30. Now, I'm testing at the moment... Because obviously my main monitor, Samsung, is a 4K HDR, super duper, you know, curved screen, the works, t telly. And um, I usually run this at 30 hertz, but I'm testing at the moment to running it in 60 hertz and then doing other settings to still achieve 30 FPS in my sim. Um, and how it performs with the monitor, other monitor using at 30 hertz, because usually, as I say, this is at 30 as well to match the other monitor, because I find that it's super important. If you're using mo multiple monitors, they almost share the same refresh rate and resolution, okay, in order to help your PC not have to do extra calculations to accommodate for each monitor. Because if, if you've got one monitor running at 4K and one monitor running at 1080p, like I have, then the, your PC has to display both, or sorry, your graphics card has to display both. And if they're not, if they're different ones, surely it's pumping out two different, like, calculations. Whereas if it only had to work out, okay, he's using 1080p in both monitors, that's how you do it. It's To me, I think that's a lot easier. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I just feel your resolution and your refresh rate have to match to get a good performance. So I'm testing at the moment by using this at, by changing things up, and and so far it's been okay. Unfortunately, it's knocked off my HDR by doing it. So that that's a side effect that I don't like. Plus, also I have no longer got the 12 PBC here uh, for the color depth, which is like the HDR. So I don't like that at the moment. I'm I might switch back. But anyway, so when you're setting up your monitor, always use the native resolution. Don't go for the highest because you think it'll look good. Go for the native because your monitor, that's what it is really, okay? It's not like my monitor isn't a proper full... 4k monitor in fact i don't not many 4k monitors are they're actually 3840 by 2160 and then it upscales to 4096 okay so um most 4k monitors will actually say that the native is this 
Um, and not too many ones will actually say, I mean, I've had this monitor for the past three years. So if you buy it recently, you, you might get it saying 4K full on, you know. Um, and I use the highest 32-bit color depth. It's the only option there. I use RGB here. I find that that is actually works better uh, for me. Um, so I, I, I use that basically. Um, and obviously I use the full dynamic range because it's a 4K HDR monitor. Uh, if it's a 1080p monitor, then I'd probably say use the limited option. Um, but it really depends. You'll know which one to use because your display will look overly bright or dark if you use the wrong one. So uh, if, if, if you've set this incorrectly, your sim will be affected. Um, right, so starting at the bottom, I basically set all the NVIDIA setting for, uh, for everything. Now, using the video player setting, I mean, obviously this is only when you're watching films. So using the uh, VLC player, which, which is the program I use to watch uh, video on, um, this has no effect on your simulator. So it makes no difference if I was to tick that over that. Adjust video color settings. This will affect your simulator. Um, again, I choose the full dynamic range. I don't play with the gamma and I don't play with the color. Um, I just tick NVIDIA settings and then that's it. I have multiple... Excuse me. I haven't made any changes, mate. But if you want to apply, go right ahead. I've not changed anything. <laughs> Um, if you have multiple monitors, then obviously, you know, you'll have them listed here. And then you can move this monitor around wherever you would like it positioned. So I have my second monitor, like it is in real life, on the left-hand side. So when I go through with my mouse to it, I like I couldn't do it by going to the top of the screen here. I have to actually go to the bottom of the screen, like it's indicated here. And that's because the monitor is slightly lower down in the corner anyway. So... Um, you want to be able to match this with what you've got your setup. If you have three monitors, you've got another one here. Make sure, obviously, your main is number one, and then two and three. Um, and that. Uh, you want to apply them again? Just apply them again, mate. I mean, he hasn't changed anything, mate, so thank you for that. Let's just go back and double check you haven't actually changed anything. Okay, I'm happy. Right, object. Uh, Adjusting the desktop size and position. So again, you've got to do it for both monitors. Don't forget, if you've got multiple monitors, you've got to do it for every single monitor. And I use performance scaling on the GPU. Now, the reason I use G, uh, this um, on the GPU rather than the display, like you would think, oh, well, hang on, to save performance, use it on the display and you'll get, it, it, you know, your your GPU won't be affected. Now, I've got a TI card. I have a 1080 TI with 11 gig of VRAM attached to it. Unless you're running a TI card, I would actually recommend performance scaling on the display rather than your GPU. You know, because your, your GPU is going to be stressed enough as it is. You don't need to add more pressure to it. My GPU never gets maxed out, never gets stressed with, with 5.1 or even 5.0. Um, I think the most... Uh, VRAM my um, the simulator uses it's something like six or seven out of the eleven. Um, so I I actually perform scaling on the GPU because I have the excess VRAM to spare. If you don't have excess VRAM, if you've only got a six gig card or an eight gig card, I recommend performance scaling on the display rather than the GPU. And make sure you override the scaling mode set by games and programs. So basically, a game doesn't suddenly change this because you could be flying your sim in full screen mode. And then if something else starts it up behind the scenes, it could just basically take your display away from you. And you're like, whoa, where's my, where's it? What's happened? What's gone? It's gone to black. And you're thinking, oh, it's crashed. But actually it's, it's another program stealing the thing. So obviously you don't want that happening. Override the scaling set by game. So basically Windows take, or my GPU, sorry, takes control of this, not the games or the programs you're using. Basically, my GPU is in, is in charge of the, the display, so that way Windows don't get involved. Uh, obviously, the refresh rate, that will kind of set by itself, but all these are the supported refresh rates with your GPU. So if you see 30, 
uh, your display dis supports it and then you can run it if you want to save frames if you want to save performance run your sim at 30 hertz and match your fps to 30 and you'll be able to actually load more stuff into your sim if you're running a sim at 60 hertz your fps has to match 60 hertz otherwise you're going to get screen tearing and stutters and you're going to have more problems but you to be honest to run um a full frame at six at you know, 60 frames a second is actually quite intensive on the PC. Running a sim at 30 frames a second is le is half as intensive. So it, it doesn't require a bigger load on your GPU, um, which means you can actually run higher settings, which is exactly what I do. Um, and obviously no scaling. I don't put it to full screen. I just basically don't let my GPU do anything about the scaling of the monitor it's not doing any extra things it's it's not getting involved basically and things it's deciding what's happening but it's not taking part if you know what i mean um and again just you know the two settings are basically matched in but all my monitors i don't actually do anything with the digital audio except turn off audio um i don't have my audio running through hdmi um, to any speakers or to my TV doesn't display audio all my audio goes into my headphones So I don't need audio mixed in with the HDMI signal So the only thing coming out of that HDMI signal is video signal and that's it. There's no audio laced in with it um, There's nothing to do here and nothing to do really with rotate this unless you have got your monitor upright um, Adjust desktop color settings again for both of them, the same. Use NVIDIA settings for my desktop programs. So basically this affects the SIM, or if you used full, full screen videos, it wouldn't affect the SIM. I wouldn't recommend auto select because it can, it can actually auto select during your SIM while it's running. If you tab out of your SIM, if you go off something, the focus is pulled and suddenly, nvidia can actually change your uh like the way it handles it so i don't have auto select i i just i i select it myself i don't like auto stuff so i i kind of remove it because i like to i like to change it myself so i don't actually have much that is the auto you know option uh we already talked about this uh resolution and configure this i uh, choose your your gpu okay um unless you've got an insane cpu um i mean your gpu handles this better than your cpu okay your cpu will slow your sim down okay uh the gpu will not if you don't have a lot of gpu power if you're using a medium to low card then select the cpu if you've got a if you've got a high to ultra end card then select your gpu um if if your graphics card supports this and then go to uh, adjust image settings and make sure your preference is set to quality and then in the manage 3d settings under program settings you can actually specify um, an actual P3D profile on your GPU. Now, I'm actually testing settings at the moment. So um, these aren't my usual settings, but I will tell you what my usual settings are. But I'm testing these at the moment to see how they run in P3D. So uh, I don't deal with image sharpening. Um, I do in games though, I don't in simulation. Um, but if you find that your textures aren't as sharp as you'd like them, uh, then I would turn it on and turn this to 0 0.20 and turn this to 0 0.10. Actually, I'll leave that on and we'll, we'll see it in the sim, but this will sharpen up your textures, but it will sharpen up the entire sim as well. I don't like the actual sharpening because it means that I have to have higher anti-lazing settings by using this. So I just turn it off. Antistropic and anti-lazing, 
you want to make sure it says application controlled or off okay um if you've got a 4k monitor and you're using 4k textures and you're inside your simulator it's set to 4k which i'll show you under display if this is set to 4k and you're running 4k textures on a 4k monitor you can turn off antistropic and anti-lazing you actually don't need it because everything's matched perfectly there's no you don't need to smooth out any jaggy lines because you won't get any jaggy lines so actually you can turn off all that and you'll save a whole heap of frames um, anti-lazing and, and antistropic filtering is the biggest performance here. I mean, to be honest, you could probably leave on antistropic filtering, but anti-lazing, you won't need that at all. The reason I have it on is because I have actually set my resolution of my sim to 2560 by 1440, which I'll go into that later. Anti-transparency, now I'm, I'm testing this. It's off at the moment. I haven't had any problems with my buildings. I haven't had any problems with my trees. Um, but if you put multi-sample on, I believe it is, you're going to get flickering. You're going to get the weirdness with the edge of the trees and the edge of the um, buildings when True Sky is affecting with it. Um, I have mine off and I'm, I'm testing this and so far, so good. So... Um, I believe that that issue with the buildings and trees is directly related to the transparency setting of the anti-aliasing, but I'm still testing, so I, I can't be sure. On the GPU, the CUDU DA, make sure you select your actual GPU. Don't just use your global setting or whatever. Actually select the GPU. It will go back to all anyway, but just make sure you select it. Uh, at the moment, I turn low latency mode off, but if you find that your sim is underperforming and you have got like quite a good graphics card, you can turn that on and it will help to smooth out any stutters. Maximum frame rate. Now, I try and achieve 30 FPS in my sim because I have my monitor set to 30 hertz when I'm inside the sim. At the moment, it's set to 60, so I've told my GPU to allow for that, right? Because I want to test the performance. So far, so good, but I, I think I will revert back to setting my display at 30 hertz um, and then having um, the sim just be matched with the V-Sync on that. But cap your frame rate in your NVIDIA control panel to what you want to run it at plus three frames. So I want to run it at 30 and I add three. That's why I got 33 as the value. Um, sometimes I find in P3D, if you aim, for, if you cap your frames to a certain number, it just does below it. It like does around five frames lower than actually what you set. So overcompensate it for in your uh, NVIDIA control panel. And when we get into the sim, you'll see that it actually locks at 30. I don't have a multi-frame sampled AA. I turn that off. My OpenGL rendering GPU is actually selected, not just, you know, auto-select. It's actually selected. Um, power management mode. Now, prefer maximum performance, yes. But I have a feeling people having issues with their graphics card might be related to this setting. If you have the adaptive power setting I would suggest using that again I'm testing at the moment shader cache turned on if you have between 60 to 100 gig of free hard drive space on your uh, on your PC turn shader cache on it will use your hard drive like a cache build up a, a resource of files that it can use again and again in a pool and it will save performance in your sim i always try and have a hundred gig free when i go flying in p3d um, i never go flying with less than 60 gig free space i get lower performance when i do and i get higher performance when i have hard drive space free in excess 
of 60 gig. Always try and have 100 gig of your hard drive space free on your C drive. I find that it helps with performance greatly. Texture filtering is off, um, but I do set the quality to high, even though it's turned off. If you set this to high quality, it disables all the filtering done on your textures. It doesn't actually try and enhance them or it doesn't use your GPU power for anything but what it should. If you have this set to anything else, you're draining your GPU power when it could go towards your SIM. Um, the the ad actual quality advancement that you get when texture filtering is on isn't that great. It's not as, as good as it, like, it's not worth the drain on your GPU for having it on. So I turn it off, but I still do set it to high quality. I have trilinear optimization evidently turned on, although I usually have that turned off. Um, and negative LOD at the moment, I'm testing with allow. Everybody will say you need to clamp that, but to be honest, it drains your GPU if, if you do. If you have it to allow, it performs better. And that's what I'm testing at the moment. So I have a feeling, yes, this will improve your texture quality, but I feel that you can actually do that uh, within the CFG file. So I'll show you again that later. Threaded optimization. Now, I have, for my CPU, I use Process Lasso, okay? This helps maintain, this is my optimization for my CPU now. This helps maintain a, uh, what's, what's the words? This helps maintain a steady CPU, okay? I have, as you can see, eight core, uh, eight threads on my four core uh, PC. And P3D, no matter what anybody says, P3D will only use one or two of these cores at its maximum, okay? It's still not really there for multi-threading, okay? Um, so you kind of have to do that yourself if you want to lighten the load. So I don't have P3D running on all my cores or all my threads. That would be insane and ridiculous. Um, if I can find it, where's P3D? There it is. I don't know why there's two processes. There should only be one. Rip. But as you can see, if we actually go into the CPU setting, I've actually limited the uh, CPU core setting to four threads only. So P3D runs off only half of my CPU power. The other half of my CPU power is divided up between all my add-ons OBS and the Windows operating system. P3D has exclusive access of CPU zero. Um, I don't give this to anything else because CPU, I think it's one or zero, is the one that it maximizes the most. So it can have it. Everything else is then diverted around to the others. Um, so as you can see, OBS is running between four to seven. Uh, P3D is uh, 0 to 3. Now, some Windows files, even if you do set it to, um, to if you set your 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 threads for a program for, of Windows, it will set it back again anyway. So, oh, hello. Sorry about the guy. I'm very sorry, but um, my my internet isn't as strong as I'd like it. So I'm sorry if it's getting a bit bit ratey or a bit low quality. I'm so I'm really truly sorry, but my internet's taking a bit of a dive at the moment. So can you do that with MF? Uh, my hair is too long. Can you do this with MF twenty? Yeah, you can use Process Lasso with any Windows program. So you could do it with the Microsoft Flight Sim as well, yeah. Um, although, although I wouldn't recommend um, anything that you see in this video for the Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's a totally different type of simulator. It doesn't have legacy uh, code. Well, it does actually have legacy code in it, but it doesn't have as much as P3D does. It Microsoft Flight Simulator, simulator is actually more benefited to run on more current equipment like rising cards and amd gpus 
Um, it's more streamlined for those rather than for Intel and NVIDIA. So anything you see me say here, I would not apply to the Microsoft Flight Sim. If I mean, I have done a Microsoft Flight Sim video like this on my channel, and you can go check it out. But this is what I use to maintain my CPU. So because I use Process Lasso, I've turned threaded optimization off. If you don't have Process Lasso, you can turn this on, but it ain't gonna really do anything because P3D doesn't use multiple threads of a CPU. It only uses one or two max and that's it. Um, you will see more, you know, all your threads being used, but P3D will only actually use a couple and that's it. It hasn't actually, it, it's it's legacy software. So it's, it's not, it wasn't like the core uh, engine of P3D is from FSX. You know, it wasn't built around multi-threads, you know? Triple buffering, I really suggest if you have vertical sync turned on or turn active at all in this, which I do, turn triple buffering on. This actually helps to steady your frame rate and with stutters. So, um, and if you have got, again, a good PC, turn it on. If you have got like a low to medium, then maybe turn it off. Um, so vertical sync, I usually have this turned on when I'm setting my uh, refresh rate to 30, but again, I'm testing, so it's adaptive half refresh rate. If you've got a 60 hertz monitor, guys, um, you don't need to be achieving 60 FPS in your simulator because you won't be able to run as much. Your PC will struggle more. You'll have more crashes, okay? Running a flight sim at 60 FPS is insane, okay? Because of the way the flight simulator uses a frame rate, it's overkill. It's necessary in a game, but a game is a lot faster. A flight simulation is not fast, okay? Even if you're flying the Concorde, it ain't fast, okay? You're not whipping the camera around like you're gunning people down in Call of Duty. You're you're panning your camera slowly, okay? Your your um, plane is traveling traveling relatively slowly in accordance with the landscape. It's not zooming around like a madman on a Call of Duty map. So having 60 FPS, you're putting more strain on your hardware than you actually need to. I strongly suggest if your monitor does not support 30 hertz to leave it at 60 hertz, but use adaptive half refresh rate on vertical sync, right? And lock your frames to 33. That will lock your frames in your simulator to 30 FPS. And that is more um, better for your PC, but that is more than enough to run a flight simulator on. Flight simulation and gaming are two different things. People who say, oh, man, I've got to have 120 FPS. Mate, you don't know what you're doing, okay? Just go back to Call of Duty, please. This is flight simulation, all right? So trust me, 30 FPS is more than enough to run a working smooth sim. If you watch any of my videos, apart from the internet lag, <laughs> you, you won't see any stutters, okay? Um, and my system can handle all this. Okay, so those are my settings for P3D. I, I mean, there's no point going through global settings because I actually, I use this differently. But for P3D, set up a profile on your GPU if you have an NVIDIA card and use these settings, okay? But just bear in mind, I'm testing these settings. My normal settings is what I've actually gone through with you. Um, and that is it for this one. Now, I have heard people say, where is it? Uh, if you click enable developer settings, you'll get an extra drop down here, which I don't get. But um, you might do on a 2080 card. And there is some settings to go through in there, but I, I don't have uh, access to that, I'm afraid. Um, but I think it's, you just tick it to turn on. That's all. Right. So that is your GPU. Okay, now we're going to go through the P3D settings and then we're going to go through my CFG file. Or actually, we'll do the CFG file first. Okay, oh, hello. 
so I have changed my CFG file considerably. Let me go get the original because I've saved it. Uh, original P3D CFG file. Okay. So this one here is the original. Okay. I've changed some of the settings in this. Okay. So actually, do you know what? We'll, I want them side by side to be fair. We'll open this one up in Notepad. Right. Don't need to worry about the first lot of them, okay? Nothing to do with the flight sim. It's about, you know, when you're filming stuff, when you're using the internal recorder. Don't worry about that. Um, so the first thing I've changed is you're going to have max point lights and max spotlights to 250. Now, before I get into this, disclaimer alert. This CFG file is very specific to my machine. It's specific to my PC, my hardware, my GPU, my CPU, my memory, okay? My operating system and the P3D I use, okay? If you have a, a system that is similar to mine, then you could actually use my settings, okay? If you don't, then I would not advise applying these settings because they work on my machine, they might not work on yours. So enter them at your own risk. I use a 1080 Ti graphics card. It has 11 gig of VRAM attached to it, 11 gig. I have 32 gig of memory and I have the i7-700K overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz. So though that's my PC, okay? If you've got the same or similar PC, then you could use these settings. If you don't, you might not be able to use these settings successfully. So the max point lights, the, the, the default value is 250. I've changed mine to 900, okay? And I think this changes the pinpoint accuracy, like how small or big the, the night lighting lights are. So I, I use black marble night lighting. So I've changed my max and uh, point and max spotlights to 900 from 250. The max, max texture request distance, a default is like a thousand million, whatever that is. <laughs> like I've changed mine to like 40,000 million. So it says a thousand, I've changed it to how many zeros are on that, man? There's like five zeros on there. So mine's actually, mine's 400, sorry. So I've changed mine from 1,000 to 400,000, okay? HDR brightness hasn't been changed, but I've changed the original HDR bloom threshold, okay? The HDR bloom threshold, you can actually change this safely on any card. Mine is set to 20, not 10.5. The HDR bloom magnitude, uh, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, it's just the HDR th bloom threshold. I'm thinking of something else. Um, so the other two were exactly the same. The day, it's the day what I'm thinking of. The day and night maxture exposure. The original is 2.5. I've changed mine to 3.0 on the day max exposure and 10 on the night max. My night skies are perfect for my monitor. Honestly, I've got a video coming out um, next week, which is my test video that I did, my very first flight with 5.1, and the night lighting looks gorgeous, honestly. I love 5.1. It's so, it looks so gorgeous. Anybody who says it looks, you know, like rubbish or it's not correct, mate, your monitor's not correct. That's why it doesn't look good, okay? Um, I've changed, what else have I changed? So, uh, view group, no, not that one. 
dynamic texture streaming, zero, cockpit, reflections, nope, there is something else I've changed here. Now, if you, all right, this is a big one, guys, this is a big one. If you haven't got a 4K HDR monitor, okay, and you don't get HDR in 1080p, by the way, okay, HDR is high dynamic resolution or high dynamic range, sorry. Um, it's you only find it in 4k displays because the resolution allows for such a high gamma okay anybody using a 1080p machine you need to turn this value to zero okay if you're using a 4k monitor and your hdr is turned off turn it to zero if you're using a 4k monitor and your hdr is set on leave it at one okay your simulator will drastically change when you change this value if you haven't got hdr monitor because it's loading in textures that are compensated for hdr that you're not running and so they will look overly bright they will look the colors will be wrong it will look like cac Hey, Axton, how's it going? You've only just started watching, so you don't know if I've covered already. You was getting an ucrt base DLL crash to desktop. Um, once I finish talking about the CFG file, uh, Axton, I'll, I'll address that, okay, mate? But I have got a video on my YouTube channel which shows you how you can resolve every single crash within P3D, okay? So I would suggest maybe go watch that while I talk about the CFG file. And then come back to me. All right, mate? Um, all these next settings here are exactly what I'm going to show you in the uh, the menu system. So there's no point in even talking about them. The next thing I've changed, which should be... Where is it? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Interior shadow receive shadow nope opaque textures nope right shadow log partition is something I've changed okay by default it's set to also I've changed translucent shadow texture which is set by five one two by default. I've set it to 1024, okay? So I've increased the size of the translucent shadow textures. Maybe that's why you get blocky bits. I don't know. The shadow log partition, right? If you've... How many... All right. Guys, just drop me... You're right. You got a weird one for you. When I go full screen in 5.1, it changes the resolution in your second monitor. Only started happening in 5.1. What kind of monitor you got, uh, Robbie? In fact, just bear with me, Robbie. Let me finish the CFG file, and I'll address yours. But I have a feeling you've got a 4K monitor. Just let me know what kind of monitor you've got. Okay, mate. Hands up, though. Everybody put yes in the... You do? Okay, yeah, I thought so. Everybody put in the chat either yes or no to this. Who has gone on the P3D website and actually looked at the Learning Center um, website bit? Like, I've gone on to the P3D website and I've actually read their Learning Center documents. Has anybody else done that? That Learning Center explains every single entry in a CFG file tells you exactly what it does even tells you recommended recommended entries to insert yourself that are not a part of the default cfg i mean if they're recommended just put them in mate you know what i mean but who's gone onto the pf3 p3d website and actually read the learning center like put a yes please in the comments if you have i'd, I'd love to know who has i have learned so much from that learning center okay so shadow log partition okay this is to do with your shadows and how they are displayed from the closest object which is your plane okay all the way out to 
uh, the, the horizon line, okay? The, it displays not only the quality of the shadows, but how intense that shadow is going to be. So it's kind of like your shadow draw distance slider, but it has more detail in these settings. So everything is set to 0 0.85 by default, which means, like, I, it, does, it doesn't explain how it measures these numbers, but basically, it's the same value from your cockpit to the horizon line in terms of your shadow strength and um, depth, as it were, okay? It's the same, just no matter what. Well, that's not true in real life, is it? Like, I used to be, I'm a, I used to be a, a professional photographer, and out to the horizon, because of the atmosphere, it actually brightens and fades things out so if i was wearing a black t-shirt stood right next to you it would look like a black t-shirt if i'm stood on the horizon line and you're looking at me it's actually going to look gray okay because of the atmosphere within in the way so basically these numbers have to show a gradation going out right so basically my new settings i've changed to are the strongest 0.50 because the, the, evidently the lower they are, the stronger the quality. Um, the low, which is closest to the uh, the camera, 0 0.5. Mid, 0 0.75. High, 0 0.85. And ultra, 1.0. Okay? So basically, my shadows fade out as they go off to the distance. Because that's what would happen to a shadow naturally. Um, that's, that's, that's one thing I learned from the Learning Center. Everything else here, uh, we're going to talk about in the menu, so don't bother about that. Um, right, dynamic. Nope. Exposure. Nope. Exposure rate. Nope. Right, so this here is something I've done which was a recommendation by one of the P3D developers. Enable memory optimization zero. I'm not sure if this is still relevant now or if it was a P3D 5.0 thing, but I was having an issue in 5.0 and when I put this entry in, I no longer had that issue. Um, basically, um, I mean, from what I'm told, um, it, it prevents something from your simulator doing to your GPU. And so obviously by putting zero, you're saying no to it. So it's no longer doing that GPU optimization. Um, and maybe this is the crash to desktop reason. I don't know, but anyway, a developer told me to put that in. So I put it in. Um, I don't really have changed anything with the weather here, so there's no need to go over that. Display. Okay, so texture max load is set to 3 by default. I've actually done it the same as my frame rate. So it mine says 30 because it matches my frame rate. Um, this can go as high as 120, but... Um, I find that matching the frame rate is better. Um, anything else here? All the info stuff, not really, no. Texture bandwidth multi in the default is set to 30. I've set mine to 120, which is exactly like five times or something, whatever the texture max load is. Um, this number is a, a, is a has to be in multiples of 30, by the way this number here um, upper frame rate zero that's fine texture filter that's fine scenery okay so I believe I've oh I guess I've not changed that I I did used to have these values changed but I guess uh, not anymore I thought I had them uh, main Nope. None of that. Um, there is one more. Right. Um, where is it? 
if you're having problems loading into your simulator where when you get to this splash screen here it crashes or it crashes once you click OK and you can actually load into your simulator change this value here to on show scenario window to zero and it will bypass this screen and throw you straight into your simulator if it loads into your simulator then there's nothing wrong with your p3d simulator okay the issue is either your operating system or your graphics card and that is preventing you actually loading your sim um, if you if if it crashes when you're coming into your sim then there might be a, an issue with the way your sim was installed or with your settings might need reducing or um, with your operating system um, nothing else here I think UI hardware acceleration where are we thought that was one true guess not nope nothing else here all lo a lot of these are in the menu anyway so terrain here we go here's a here's one okay so uh oh the default is 6.5 i thought the default was 4.5 I'm sure this was a default of 4.5. Costa FS tweak dude done this years ago. Don't know what that means, mate. Who's Costa? Um, I'm sure the LOD radius of default is actually 4.5. Um, not 6.5, but anyway. Maybe maybe they changed it in 5.1. Um, a lot of these are in the menu system. Global, here's one that I put in myself. Um, so use global terrain view. Okay, so which is set to false by de default. So basically what will happen is when the, the world is rendered into your camera system, uh, it's set to not do this by default, but it won't. Each view will have its own separate render out into from your sim. So basically, if you've got like multiple uh, camera points in your chase plane, each single one of them is having a newly rendered sim, fresh. Okay, or if you set it to true, like I have, where is it going? If you set that to true, they all share the same render. So your PC is not having to do multiple renders out. It's just one, and that's it. Um, that's a recommendation in the Learning Center as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, there is one that I put in as well, by the way which was recommended by somebody, I can't remember who, but this adaptive SIM group enable, I can't remember where I saw this. I think it might've been Rob Azenkoff who who, re who recommended this to me. Um, adaptive SIM group enable to false. Um, and I put that in, I don't, I don't know what it does to be honest. I have no idea. So don't save that, that's fine. So that is my CFG. So. A lot of these settings are, are done because I use black marble as well. A lot of these settings are changed because of black marble. Um, that LOD radius, I'm sure the default is 4.5. Anyway, that's my CFG file. I also was given by somebody, he's probably watching now, a lot of uh, f changes to my uh, volumetric clouds, um, which if you watch yesterday's stream, I, I, I go over this, so I'm not going to repeat myself, but we're going to actually see the changes to that because I actually updated it ready for this, so we're actually going to see the changes to it. But I'm going to go through my, my menu system now, and I'll tell you exactly. the best. My best friend in this P3D menu system 
is the profile under display global settings okay i use a lot of global uh, i use a lot of profiles as you can see and they're all stored in your p3d files in documents they're all here and the entries that are contained within are pretty much the same as in your cfg file okay but they just relate to what is in here so doesn't matter what your cfg file says now whatever this says is what actually is going to load so whenever you change your cfg file and if you're using profiles make sure you come and change the same values in here as well because this is actually what it's going to load this overwrites your cfg file um which actually i need to change a few things because i've just noticed something that isn't actually the same right so profiles are a really great way of maintaining the frame rate of your simulator okay i use these all the time i've got a pro a fly tampa profile i've got a lucla profile i've got an orbex a pmdg uh rob's azenkoff's uh profile skyforce although i don't use that anymore uk 2000 anytime i'm not receiving the frame rate that i want i return to one of these other profiles so if i'm flying a pmdg aircraft and the frame rate's like 22 23 and i'm like mm, it's not 30 i want 30 then i will click on my pmdg profile and it changes a lot of settings like a lot of cpu and a lot of gpu settings because believe it or not a lot of these settings here are made for your GPU and are made for your CPU. I'm sure everybody has read the AvSim P3D guide, so you, you know exactly what I'm referring to. Um, but uh, anyway, let's start at the top. I mean, these first two ones, I personal preference. The only thing I'd say is un untick user tips and cockpit tool tips they are a big performance kill um if you want to take them to you'll save like five frames um of your sim um I, I i don't use a lot of this stuff because like ve labels on vehicles i ain't bothered about bloody seeing a plane that's got a label on it that you don't see that in real life so why would you see it in a sim i turn that off i only have my parking brake my pause and my brakes shown to me I, everything else turn that off um the sound is set to 50 and i untick the mute on lost focus although it will also depend on which plane you're flying as well because that can happen in your uh, plane before i continue let me let me go back to what robbie was saying you've got a weird one so whenever you go full screen it changes the resolution in your second monitor okay you told me you're using a 4k uh, screen robbie what's your second monitor mate what, what please uh let me know what's what what two monitors have you got please Are you still here, Robbie? Am I still here? I'm still streaming, aren't I? Yeah. Barely. I don't, I don't think Robbie's gone, so... If it, I'll just continue. If he if he pops up, then great. Um, I've actually selected the playback devices. I haven't just left it as default. I've actually selected what I use in my uh, menu setting for sound. I've actually disabled everything that I don't use. So for speakers, everything else is disabled. Okay. 
Um, I only have one speaker playback enabled, and for recording, I only have one. Although I do have this enabled, the voice mod. Oh, it's no, it's currently unavailable. Um, I only have one input for recording and one output for playback everything else is disabled i don't it's not like it's enabled and i don't use it i disable it so the sound only comes through my headphones and i can only talk into this microphone there's no confusion for the windows pc over my audio i know exactly what my audio is doing and those are the only options i can choose for each one of these uh, my traffic settings now I don't actually have airport vehicle density uh, selected at all. Um, I can't even actually move. Oh, there we go. I can move it. Um, I don't select anything like this. A lot of developers will probably say you have to have it maxed out if you want to see all their products. To be honest, I only use really GSX and Ultimate Ground Crew. That doesn't require this slider to be used at all. The more you up this, the more FPS hit you're going to get. Same with your traffic and your land sea uh, vehicles. If um, it will clash with that on scenery. To be honest, Aviator, I don't really care. Um, I only use GSX at an airport. I don't, I'm I, like, I'm at the gate, I'm at the, the SOD gateway, and I'm interacting with GSX. I really don't care about a tug that's on the other side of the airport. Uh, you know what I mean? That that's irrelevant to me. I'm I'm at gate whatever, and I'm I'm playing there, and it's like GSX doesn't require this to be used, so I turn it down. I kill it for a performance reason. Okay. Um, if you fly on VATSIM, you can turn all of your traffic off. You don't even need it. If you fly on VATSIM. You don't need to generate any in sim traffic. So all these sliders can go to zero. I don't fly on VATSIM at the moment. So, but when I do, I'll have a VATSIM profile and I'll turn these sliders down in my VATSIM profile. Road vehicles, I have I have this at zero and I still see road vehicles. Okay. So having this turned up or down, you're still gonna see vehicles on the road. Okay. Again, I think it depends on the scenery that you choose, the airport and their surrounding space, or if you have traffic enabled in Black Marble, which I don't. But um, the only other thing I do is ships and ferries. I use Global Ships version 2. It only requires a slider setting of 5. I, I set it to 15, but it only requires this to be set at 5, and all your leisure boats and ships and ferries will load into your sim so leisure boats can go to zero because they will load i do see leisure boats um this is like best for my machine um airline traffic density do you know what when i'm trying to learn the cockpit of a 737 i don't really give a shit about 50 planes at the airport taking off and landing I'm focusing on my cockpit, on my flight deck, on the procedures that I have to do. So if there's planes flying around, great, but it's not the be all and end all. I'd rather have the performance than the planes flying. If you're flying on VATSIM, it's irrelevant. If you're not flying on VATSIM, you know, and you have like a AI traffic add-on that you want to see be in use, and it does help for immersion because you know, when you see loads of planes taken off and that, you know, it is quite nice. To be honest, I set mine to 50 and I'm happy. I still see quite a few planes at airports, even if it's set to 50. I don't care about Cessnas flying around uh, an airport, so that, that gets that, that put down to 25. Um, everything on here is going to be personal preference. None of this, uh, apart from maybe visualized GFX, has a hit on your frame rate at all. So do what you want with that. You know what I mean? We're going to cover add-ons and scenery library tomorrow. Okay. So I'm not going to talk about anything like this, but as you can see, I do run almost everything from Orbex as an add-on and I have a lot of add-ons. Um, but I'll talk about the add-on and the scenery library tomorrow, which again, I'm not going to go through this now because I'll talk about it tomorrow. So 
here are my settings for P3D. And this is the main profile that I use, which is my black marble nighttime profile. I use this day or night. I don't actually change it. I used to, but I don't anymore. Um, I have obviously the GTX 1080 Ti and the zero is your main monitor. If you have this set to one, you need to change it to zero because zero is your main display. Um, and I tried running P3D version 5.0 at full 4K and I did get a lot of crash to desktops. Uh, so when I upgraded to 5.1, I never, I've never changed this because my SIM looks great. Like, I don't mind the way the SIM looks. I haven't actually tested this with my native display yet. So I, 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 I suppose I should but I'm still trying to get 5.1 from loading every single time without problem. Um, untick autofill main view and untick blackout desktop. If you're using your SIM and you click off your screen, you're suddenly going to get a black desktop and you'll go, oh, what the hell happened? Um, and you'll look and it's because you've got blackout desktop enabled when you click off your screen. So when I click off my my SIM, I don't get that black desktop and it doesn't pause either, which is another thing here. Uh, pause on SIM focus or something, I think something like that. Uh, pause on task switch, untick that. That's a pain in the ass that is. I don't even know why they have it. Like who, who pauses their SIM when they're on the other screen? I don't know, you know. Um, FXAA is from like FSX days, okay? Do you turn that off, mate? <laughs> Unless you've got a potato GPU and a potato PC, you can turn FXAA off and you'll never you'll never see it. You'll you'll never notice the difference. Um if you've got if you've got a really low end PC, then just use FXAA and turn off all the other texture filtering. Um, I set my texture resolution to ultra at 4K because I have a 4K monitor. Um, but because I don't run my resolution at 4K, I do have to have some form of AA and uh, antistropic filtering. Um, never go with trilinear. If you click trilinear, you will get a crash to desktop. Like your SIM will not load. Okay. Trilinear crashes my sim. I maybe it's just me. I don't know. But every time I've tried that, it breaks it. So um, I only use the least amount of filtering. Turning if you've got a really low end PC, you want to turn dynamic texture streaming on because um, it's gonna. I mean, it says what it does right there. It's gonna reduce the load on your GPU. If you've got a TI card, may untick that. It's totally unnecessary. My anti-aliasing, I have to the lowest amount. Now, Black Marble actually recommends that you turn AA off completely. Um, but I set mine just a little bit because um, I have like 2K tech, uh, resolution on my screen. So I do actually have some AA. Um, turn VSync off and turn your target frame rate to unlimited because when we looked at the GPU settings, we capped it at 33. So I'll, you'll see that I'll get 30 FPS when we go into the sim. Variable refresh rate. If you've done what I've said, you do not need this, okay? If you're running your sim like a gaming rig, enable this. You'll, you'll actually benefit from it. But, I mean, if you're running your sim like a bloody gaming rig, then, mate, what are you doing, to be honest? If you're using Chase Plane, they suggest that you actually tick this box. I've tried ticking this box and it does change the way your sim camera looks right but i actually prefer the way that it looks without ticking that box um but chase plane recommend that that box is ticked my slider settings are are because i can basically because i can run it on this and it doesn't crash i've never had a crash to desktop in the sim um ever um, I don't run reflections because a lot of planes uh, and a lot of airports have built-in 
reflections into them and I you still see reflections even though I've unticked it and that's a big performance hit reflections so I untick all that special effects if you're running black marble is recommended to be at the highest setting um, and my terrain because I can I run everything at its peak it's not really necessary to do this because hang on a sec Oh, I needed a drink. If you're used to P3D version 4.5, coming into version 5.0, it's completely changed. All these sliders mean something different than 4.5. What is max in 4.5 is actually high in 5.0. So if you've got your sliders in 4.5 maxed out, then this is the same setting in 5.0. If you've got this maxed out, you're running extremely high um, scenery, more so than you did in 4.5. That one known fact, okay, is the reason why so many people struggle to run a 5.0 or 5.1, because they, they're treating their settings as if it's come from 4.5 i did a test right and uh honestly somebody tried to nuke me for doing this because they were saying i was illegally using the sim dickhead basically i took my config file from 4.5 and i put it into 5.0 okay which means all these sliders suddenly were halved all of them and it doubled my frame rate and i was like whoa Mate, what's happened? I've doubled my frame rate. All I did was use my 4.5 config file, which meant, or no, not my config, not my config file, sorry, my profile, okay? So the profile here from 4.5, I used in 5.0, and it doubled my frame rate, and I thought I'd unlocked the secrets of the universe, right? As it turns out, all I'd done was reverted my settings back to 4.5, which halved all my sliders and that was doubling my frame rate that's it dickhead you say to him he is a dickhead so um the same settings in 5.1 are not the same settings in 4.5 okay you don't need to run as high a setting obviously texture resolution seven centimeters that is the same you know, seven centimeters in 4.5 is the same as seven centimeters in 5.1. Um, same as your mesh resolution, but tessellation factor, level of detail radius, and all of these, okay, are actually increased in 5.0 and 5.1. And the reason they've done that is because of the performance gain of moving into DirectX 12. When we move, when we moved into DirectX 12, we got a massive performance gain excuse me for the simulator and for our pcs and because of that they were able to extend what every one of these sliders actually meant to actually mean that we get more in the sim now and it would stay the same performance as it was in uh, 4.5 well if you decrease your settings back to 4.5 you will see a massive sim improvement in fact you probably won't ever get a crashed desktop again because I bet you any money, like having settings run maxed out all the time is is nuking your GPU probably and nuking your PC. I mean, these are the settings I use. I don't have any issues to be honest. So, um, One thing I would say though uh, is if you have your scenery co complexity, which I've put to dense because that's the same as extremely dense in 4.5, um max out your auto gen uh, vegetation and your auto building density like max them out and use this slider here to gauge the distance so like if you're in a city put it down to medium or low and if you're out in the country put it to high or very high but use this one slider to change the performance of your sim depending on where you're going to fly 
um, because it's like you're still going to load a lot of stuff but the auto gen draw distance you're bringing it in so it's still not going to load loads you know what i mean think of it as these are a fine tune slider setting and then this is really the one slider setting that you just need to set like if both if all three of these are all maxed out you only need to play with this one here and then that's it you don't need to keep changing all different configurations you just change this one depending on where you're going to set fly which means you can create a profile for Los Angeles and then a profile for Las Vegas one for the country and one for the city and then no matter where you fly you'll still get 30 FPS um, obviously I have true sky enabled but I have it set to high and not ultra I have a feeling that again another reason contributing to the fact that true sky looks a bit weird or isn't um, playing well with so certain sort of um, landscape textures like uh, buildings and trees and stuff like that where it flickers at the top I think it's because it's set to ultra if you set this to high I, I've never had an issue with that by the way ever um, I don't worry about what this says down here because my weather program does that for me lighting now as you can see we can't change HDR lighting that sucks because what if you haven't got a HDR monitor? Well, if you untick enhanced atmospherics, it enables you to untick it. But sadly, when you go back to tick that, that comes back as a tick as well. Ah, Mate, I don't have a HDR telly. How do I get rid of it? Go into your CFG file. Here. And uh, turn the HDR1 to a zero. And you can still have True Sky enabled. But your HDR will be unticked. Okay? If you don't have a 4K monitor running with HDR turned on, you need to turn off Enable HDR Lighting. Okay? Because, honestly, it ain't gonna... It, your sim is gonna look overexposed or too dark you weather stream and your stream today have been fantastic oh robbie you're welcome mate um i did ask you i did shout you out uh, before about your issue there mate but you didn't respond you said you got a weird one when you go full screen and 5.1 it changes the resolution in your second monitor can you please tell me what two monitors you're using um in terms of their resolution and um and, and that's it just a resolution please because i have a feeling it's to do with your your gps mate oh your gps your gpu sorry not your gps <laughs> yeah your gps ain't playing with your sim um i have a feeling it's to do with your gpu mate that key assignments control calibration other controls access the or the i mean i i i have deleted a lot of these uh key assignments to be honest um and and actually assign them myself you know so i mean that's all personal preference isn't it right you know you've got a samsung 49 inch 4k okay nice one i've got a samsung too mate oh hang on let me make sure let me make sure i put my profile yeah my profile's back on sorry right. and what's your second monitor robbie We're going to Birmingham. My hometown, Birmingham. Woo -woo. A Skepter 34? What? I've never heard of that, mate. I've got to see this now. It's a 1080, but you run it... Eh? What? Robbie, wait, what? Hang on, I've got to look at this monitor. I've never heard of it. Scepter 34. What the fuck is that? Let's have a look here. Oh. Oh, mate. Gosh. 
If it's this one, return to sender, mate. Ah. Oh. Right. What's what's the deal with this? Hundred hertz refresh rate, mate. No good, mate. Can you can you do me a favor? They look nice. <laughs> Um, can you do me a favor, uh, Robbie? Can you go into your control panel, please? And under the refresh rate of this 34-inch monitor, can you tell me what uh, values you've got there, please? Yeah? It's running on 85 hertz. So, um, also, can you tell me what refresh rate your 4K monitor is running at as well? The maximum is 85 hertz. Well, it says here 100, mate, on here. Up to, up to 100 hertz. Ah, up to. Okay. Multiple ports with three HDMI and one display each accelerate refresh rate up to 85 hertz. <laughs> but you've just said up to 100 hertz refresh rate, mate. I think you're bullshitting us there by trying to tell us it, you're 100 hertz, but you're not. You're 85, mate. Because you say down here, refresh rate up to 85 hertz, but then you're trying to say go up to 100. I don't know. Anyway. Um... It's the different model. I mean, it's the same. Yeah, it might be a different model, but uh, it's it's from what you've just told me, it's very similar. So your okay, your four Robbie, your four K is set to one hundred and forty four hertz. Is that what you're trying to say to me? And your secondary monitor is set to eighty five hertz. Okay. Oh. Are you a gamer by any chance? Okay, Robbie, I need you to do me a favor, okay? Please tell me what choices you have under the 4K refresh rate and then separately for, yeah, you are, uh, for your 1080p. Oh, you're just a simmer, sorry, okay. So please tell me what, what refresh rate options you have for your 4K and then separately what options you have for your 1080p, please. To be honest, I'm not like... I don't believe this is the... Uh, well, this could be the issue, to be honest. What was the issue again, you said? Uh... When you go full screen in 5.1, it changes the resolution in the secondary monitor. Okay. Hey, NASA crew have arrived. Okay, so your 4K one, you've got 60, 100, 120, and 144. Okay. And so your 1080p one is 60, 75, and 85. I can see a theme here. Robbie, what do you what frames do you get in your simulator? Please. Like do you have in your NVIDIA control panel a frame rate limit set? See mine's set to 33. Thirty-two, thirty-three. Okay. What do you have your vertical sync set in your? Uh, you don't. You don't limit your frames. Okay. Your vertical sync is that set at any? Like, is that on or adaptive or what's the setting with your vertical sync?
use 3D application. Okay, inside your simulator, what options do you have for V-Sync and target frame rate and variable refresh rate, please? Oh, my leg. Leg's going to sleep. V-Sync off. Frame rate unlimited. And the variable refresh rate. Yeah, yeah, that's 3D. Display setting. What display setting? Unticked, okay. Based on what you've told me, Robbie, your PC is having to work harder than it really needs to. Okay, based on what you've told me. Now, I don't that might not be the the, the the answer to the issue you've come to me with, okay? But your PC is working harder at doing exactly what my PC is doing, okay? You 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 could help your PC by not a lot, not getting it to work harder, if you know what I mean. Um, you could take the strain off your PC. Um, it might fix your issue, but I don't think it will. Um, I think the issue is when you run in full screen. I don't run in full screen, okay? So I used to. And what used to happen with this monitor, when I put it in full screen, my monitor would kick in with HDR, uh, with UHD, and it would honestly just look awesome, okay? But I don't run it in full screen anymore, and uh, HDR still kicks in. But um, I get I don't get any I get better frames basically by running it in windowed mode. So under where is it? Uh, there's a there's something here that says run full screen or something I can't remember. It might it might be when we get into the sim, but. There is a there is a button here that says run full screen. Um, anyway, do me a favor, Robbie. Can you just try these settings for me and then come back to me tomorrow with what you experience, okay? And just see what happens, okay? It may fix your issue. I don't think it will because I think the issue is you're running in full screen mode. But I, just try this for me, okay? Set both of your monitors to 60 hertz okay take off the 85 hertz setting and take off the 144 hertz setting and run both of them at 60 hertz okay make sure your output dynamic range is set to full um and, and do it for both obviously you gotta you know click on both your monitors um and you could turn vertical sync in your GPU to adaptive half refresh rate and maximum frame rate set to 33 FPS. And I bet you any money, you'll have a smoother sim if you do. Your PC won't have to work as hard, but the visuals will remain the same. Will you try that for me and then let me know tomorrow what you think? Um, you can even join my Discord with a link down below and chat with me. You know what I mean? Chat with me privately um, to let me know if you want to let me know sooner. Um, but just, just run those settings in your sim and let me know what performance you get. Because I have a feeling that might help you. By the way, these monitors absolute crap for flight simulation they're the, they're great for games guys but these high 
F these high refresh rate monitors are actually bad for flight simulation. Um, I was actually going to get an ultra wide one. Um, I think it was this one actually, but not a one with a high refresh rate. Otherwise, I'd be I'd be I just run it as a low because whatever your refresh rate you're running at, your FPS has to match. Otherwise, you get stutters in the sim and screen tearing. So if your screen is running at 144 hertz, your PC is trying to get your sim to maintain 144 FPS. Um, although with, with the way you've got your V-Sync and Unlimited and all that, it, it probably wouldn't because um, it's just going to do what it can. But trust me, if you run those settings, I bet you any money you will have a smoother flight experience. And, and let me know how you get on, please, um, with that. Um, the last the last thing I'll say on the menu system here is the shadows. Shadows are a real PC killer for performance in your sim. Um, I have just the bare essentials ticked because without shadows, the sim looks like shit. It looks like FSX without shadows. So no worries, Robbie. You're welcome. Um, I, I've got to have shadows, but I don't really have building or vegetation shadows because they nail your frames. Um, it would look better with them, but it's too much of a hit. It's like, forget it. I can't, I, I don't, I don't want to take the hit on frames. I want to try and keep my FPS at exactly 30 and I don't want it to go up and down. I want it to stay at 30 and that gives me a smooth flight. We're going to get into the sim now and we're going to do a quick flight because I need to test my, my true sky settings because I've altered the config for True Sky in the volumetric clouds, and I want to see if it has actually changed. Plus, you'll get to see the difference between default weather and then uh, Active Sky getting involved and then Rex getting involved, like we did yesterday. We'll do it again today. So. Let me just quickly check. That's all good. By the way, guys, um, in my Discord, I don't know if anybody's aware, I run a private Flight Sim Help channel. So if you jump into my Discord, there is, in fact, I'll bring up my Discord on, on so you can see. If you jump into my Discord and scroll down to the bottom, there is a free Flight Sim Assets channel giving you loads of free... Uh, that guide, AvSim guide is in here, but it gives you loads of free uh, tips for P3D, real good performance saves. But also, I have, where is it? A Flight Sim Help channel, which I answer personally one-to-one -one any issues that people get. So if you need to contact me, like, oh, dude, I'm having this trouble. I'm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've got two people here I've got to answer to. So I, I, I actually help you straight away. Like, within the 24 hours of you posting in this channel, I will I will help you. And I don't stop until you it's sorted. So if anybody's having any issues that, that we don't talk about today and you'd rather talk about privately with me, you can contact me through Discord and... Um, and we'll do it privately. Dudes, that blew me away about Sean Connery. Look at this. Has everybody seen this about Sean Connery? He died on the 10th of... Sorry, the 31st of October, 2020. And when you add those numbers up, it makes 007. It gives... The, actually, it makes the number 7. But there's two zeros there that you can throw in. 007. That was the day he died. Mate, he's a legend in life and death. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Sean Connery's a legend, guys. <laughs> but seriously, that blew my mind when I read when I found that out. I was like, whoa. Even his death was was amazing. <laughs> that that to me is more freakier than 2020. And I think it's coincidence. Hey, right, Loxley, how's it going, mate? Same with Alex Trebek. 
Alex Trebek. Who's that? That name is that a character in a film? That name rings a bell. Who's Alex Trebek? Jeopardy game host. Oh, he dies. Oh, no way. What was about his? What was? What was? Passed away. Oh, he today it was. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, no way. Was there something special about the date of his death then? Was it like a double jeopardy answer or something? I don't know. I mean, bless him, he had cancer, yeah. I mean, if you don't live in America, you're probably thinking, who the hell's that? But yeah, I, I, I watch Jeopardy in America, so I, I know who he is. Man. We've lost so many celebrities this year. It's... I mean, so we've lost so many people, let alone celebrities. We've lost so many people, you know? We've got to be thankful that we're alive, do you know what I mean? You love watching Jeopardy Locks. Uh, I haven't watched it for years, to be honest. I don't, we don't get it over here. Hmm. Has anybody got any other questions about their 5.1? Is anybody having issues? Because I see a lot of issues in the P3D forums, like a lot. And um, for anybody who's having issues or anything like that, you know what I mean? You've been here the whole stream. You've just been lurking and listening, mate. So have uh, like eight other people. I bet Kenko is watching, eh? <laughs> Just the haze that I say in yours too. Just the haze. Right, the haze, guys. Yes. There do you know what? We can fix that ourselves, guys. Like, don't bother waiting for the developers. They'll they'll probably won't even do it for us. Right? If you go and download Model Converter X, in fact, just type it into Google. Let's bring up a search. Uh, where is it? Model Converter X, right? which is a part of Scenery Design's website, which has got loads of FSX, P3D, X-Plane apps you can use, tools to help you. Oh, you've got it, Robbie, and you've used it. Well, there you go, then. Oh, you have to get it. Sorry, and use it. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you said you already had then. Right, if you get this right, this thing basically will help you change what's wrong with their... Um, Thing. So basically, okay, it's hard to explain, right? It's hard to explain, but I'm going to use Orbex as an example, but I'm not singling them out because every every developer is the same. UK2000, Fly Tampa, everyone's got... Oh, hello, we're in the sim. Everyone's got issues with their models, okay? Hang on a sec. Is that too loud? No, okay. So if we look here, right? No. Nope over here these trees are way too like they don't interact with true sky at all okay they're, they're not interacting with the weather and the lighting and that is because UK 2000 decided like these are trees from UK 2000 these aren't anything to do with uh, Orbex these are part of the airport scenery Oh, I've got to update GSX, guys. Bloody hell. Right. Forget them. Hang on, I can't think with this bloody racket mirror. Alright, there we go. Nuke that. So, they decided... When, when UK2000 made this airport, this was made for FSX, okay? And all UK2000 did was port it over to P3D version 4. And then ported it over to P3D version 5. That is it. When they originally made these textures, they chose options in the program, right? To probably model Converter X, to be honest. They had these options that they chose that are not compatible with P3D version 5.0. And these three options here is exactly the problem.
A aviator. I'm Pestridge 77, in case you had noticed. The only issue I've had is with the corruption of my files from the Windows operating system. <laughs> oh, you know that. Okay. Are you Clive? No, you're not Clive, because you were both in the same chat yesterday. Um, okay, so... Alpha test function, alpha test level. You right, John? How's it going, mate? What about 1440 monitors? I'll, 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 we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, mate. These three options here are the reason why we're getting the problem in P3D. Because scenery developers were using unsupported techniques to create these add-ons, okay? Which, back in FSX, were absolutely fine. Um, back in P3D version 1, 2, and 3, were absolutely fine. Unfortunately, in versions 4 and 5, they're not fine. They're not supported. And they haven't been supported since P3D version 3. So, what the developers need to do, back to all the affected sim objects, is go back and just change these three values. That is it. And then save the file again. Okay? And then, everything will be fine. Everything will work as it should, okay? This is being brought up in an Orbex forum and the P3D forum by a, a, um, a P3D developer, okay? He's told them specifically what to do to correct the problem. Unfortunately, a lot of developers are refusing to go back and change their add-ons because it's going to be so time-intensive to do. Um, and essentially... It'll be just a patch. It'll be a free patch to update to the current version. So some developers are going, I'm not doing that. I'll just redo the entire airport or I'll remake the entire scenery and sell it back to the community again. And that way I get a bit of cha-ching. It is a lot of hard work for, for them to do. But I mean, to be honest, it's their own fault for porting over old shit, to be honest. That's the reason why we've got this issue now. It's nothing to do with P3D. It's their add-ons, basically, that they've ported over from the past. If they hadn't ported over from the past, which Orbex are famous for doing, then they wouldn't have this issue. If they'd have made it from scratch to be current with versions 4 and 5 of P3D, this would not be the case. And for any airport where there is no issue, they have made that from scratch for current versions and they haven't ported it over so um, I mean other than that I think the airport looks great UK 2000 I mean I've done a brilliant job I believe this is Birmingham Airport this is and it looks amazing unfortunately with the objects of the trees they've chosen unsupported techniques to render them that is the issue guys we can change it for ourselves it is such a shame it really is uh, Robbie but if you get Model Converter X, right, we can change that for ourselves. We can actually go back and correct their mistakes. And to be honest, they'll probably prefer us to do it to them because they don't have to do it. <laughs> they can make airports for Microsoft. Right, let's get this puppy in the air, man. Frame rate, top right corner. Top left, sorry. Don't know why it's dipping to 30, 20 and that. I am streaming, to be fair. I don't really like flying these types of planes, to be honest. There's no clouds in the sky again. Birmingham usually has loads of clouds. Now, I'm getting a bit of a performance stutter here, and that's because I'm streaming at the same time I'm using the sim. I don't get this stutter usually, and I didn't actually get this stutter yesterday, to be honest. So, But I usually have two PCs. It is a fighter jet, Loxley, yeah. I usually have two PCs, one for streaming and one for flight simming, and that helps me maintain 30 FPS in my sim. Sadly, I don't have that PC with me at the moment, so we have to make do with this, which means my sim performance will dip a little bit, but it doesn't when I'm not streaming. I It's fine when I'm not streaming. Right, so there's the default weather, guys. I mean, there is no weather. So, that's that. <laughs> Dude, what is going on with this sim? It's one giant stuttery mess, man. Right. 
We're going to start active sky now. I know, actually, I need to see clouds first. There's no clouds in the bloody sim. We need clouds. Um, building storms. That gives me clouds, doesn't it? Yes. Give me clouds, mate. By the way, going in your menu, by the way, during a flight, will cause your sim to crash on your next startup. Don't go into your menu once you've started your flight. Stay out of the menu. When I try and restart my sim, it will crash. It won't load. And that's because you go I got I went into my menu. There's something wrong with um like going going into your menu and changing settings on the fly. It don't work. So it looks like the clouds have really like Oh gosh. Dude, I'm going to change my settings back here to what that developer told me to do. These are shocking. Yeah, my sim didn't look like this before. Frame rate's a bit of dust again. Yeah, I'm going to change my settings back to what they were originally um, with those volumetric clouds because uh, it don't look good. I mean, they've got black outlines around the clouds which weren't there before. Shit. Um, I don't actually like the look of this. But, saying that, I don't know, I'm not seeing that boxy, boxy thing here. But yeah, I'm not a fan of these uh, these these looks. Right, let's start up Active Sky and see what that can do with it. And we've got to change that in the the menu system as well to Active Sky. I mean, you don't have to, but I I do. I like to. I think it will work it regardless of what you do, though. Switch it to Live Weather. Refresh the weather. Right. It's probably going to load in nothing, to be honest, because there's no bloody weather in Birmingham at the moment. Rex textures are amazing from Skyforce. Moon, very detailed. Oh, the moon is much better in Skyforce, mate. Yeah. Clouds are towering, very high compared with Active Sky. I prefer Rex than Active Sky, by the way. I like to call it Active Sly. Or ass guy. Later, Adam. Oh, thank you, Tom, for watching, mate. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Take care, mate. I'll see you later. Right, so, I mean, there's no clouds from the... Look at that. Active sky, no clouds. I don't know if that's current. What does it say on my phone? Let's have a look at the weather report. My location, well, it says it's raining, to be honest. I don't see any rain. Active Sky, you're not even reporting accurate weather here, mate. You're supposed to be raining. Shit, isn't it? Let's see what, um, let's see what Sky Force does with the, uh, the weather. Because I'm not seeing any rain. You need clouds for rain. Where's the rain? Where's the airport? Dude, we've lost the airport, man. Ugh, look at them quarries down there. Bloody hell. At least the scenery looks nice. Oh, there's the airport. At least you can find your airports now. I mean, that's a plus, isn't it, guys? If you can't find your airport, just look for the buildings that are standing out in the in the uh, weather. I mean, I might not change mine, to be honest. Oh, yes, Aviator. Yes, I also, I do use Envid Shade. I have that active and it's set to default, mates, and it works fine. Not a problem. Um, yeah, at least you can find your airports now. Hey. Okay. <laughs> right, let's see what Skyforce does, yeah? Change that. Load that up. Is it loading? Yep. Change this. 
to Rex Weather Sink. Ooh. An immediate effect. Look at that. Love it. Are we going to have... And I'll click Refresh Weather as well. Oh, it's already done it. Look at that. Now, let's see if it's raining over Birmingham, shall we? Because it should be. I, I, honestly, these cloud textures, I, 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 they do look different when Rex is doing it, right? They look different to the normal. Like, default and active sky do not look like this. So Rex does something to the cloud textures. I don't know what they do, but I approve. Because they look more realistic now than they ever did. Now, the only issue is, whenever Rex is changing the weather... That you do get stutters in your sim and there's no way around that so until it's finished injecting the weather you just gotta put up with it but it's usually a dip of like five to, five to seven there's no it's not a drastic one right here we go we're going down guys hopefully it's gonna be raining in Birmingham because that's what it says here although I'm not seeing any rain outside my window. Dude, look at that. That just looks real. That just looks real, guys. Look at that. I mean... Never mind your Microsoft, mate. Fuck me. That just looks real. You see how we get reflections on the, uh, on the textures of the plane as well? And you get reflections on here. They're like baked in, so you don't have to have reflections to put on. Turn that performance kill off. Right, let's dip down below the cloud, shall we? Maverick's coming in for the hard deck. Ghost Rider is the pattern clear. We're coming to buzz the tower. Negative, the pattern is full. Fuck it, we're doing it anyway. Where is the tower? I can't even see the tower. In the mist. Dudes, I'm going like 450 miles an hour here. I better slow down. <laughs> right, I don't, there's no rain either. I, I mean, it's not raining outside, so. Hey there, Sutton Park. Golf course. That's not Sutton Park. I don't know where it is. Anybody see the tower? I got a control tower at Birmingham. You know, you have to uh, forgive me for these uh, frames. Like, there is something I need to address in my sim clearly. Meteor shower, fog, not rain. Ah, oh, okay. You're right, Philip. How's it going, mate? Thanks for the tip. You run the repair on the content scenery and it worked. Mate, you're welcome. I'm so glad you had it. Hey, Captain Michael, how's it going, mate? We're back in the skies. Oh, yeah, baby. We can't find the control tower to buzz it, though. It seems to have disappeared here. Oh, there it is. Dead ahead with the default one. Well, at least we got a backup control tower in case we lose that one. Coming in, guys. Buzz the tower. Just doing a maverick move. Right, okay. So, I mean, as you can see, I don't have any of those issues with True Sky with the buildings and stuff. 
Okay, so everybody who's going, oh, True Sky has ruined it and it's all rubbish and it doesn't work. They're, it's not it's not the P3D application, right? It's it's their settings. Okay, it's their PC basically. I, I've got to work out why these stutters are happening though. I'm wondering if it's because that image sharpening that I've turned on. Because I didn't have that turned on before. Let me just turn this off. As I say, I don't usually run with the image sharpening turned on, so... Uh, I mean, it's not going to take effect now, but... At least uh, I know it's finished. Like, I've changed it. But I don't think that's the reason why I'm getting these stutters. I think the reason I'm getting these stutters is because last night... I repaired my scenery and my content... And I never ran the sim first. And I should have, and then I should have shut it down and run it again. So, on the next time I load my sim up, it will be fine. And I think that's why it's a bit glitchy. But, bloody hell, it's fogging in now, isn't it? What's going on here? Hey, you, you said fog in the, in the chat just then, mate. You just brought the, buddy, the fog of Birmingham in. <laughs> Can't see anything. Am I live on Twitch? No, just just on here, mate. Just on here. Anyway, that's that's my sim, guys. We've gone through the um, the settings, okay. Um, that's what Skyforce and uh, P3D uh, Active Sky, sorry, do. If you haven't got Skyforce right, and you want it, go buy it for version four. Because it's not out for version 5 yet. But it will be coming in like 2 or 3 weeks to version 5. So, I mean, I'd just wait to be honest. I wouldn't recommend buying it if you haven't got it. But if you have got it for version 4, you can use it with version 5.1. And it actually enhances your, your weather. And it makes it look a lot better than it will if you don't use it. Okay? When, when 5. Point, look at all this stuff that it's still doing active sky um actually what is it doing saving weather to disk downloading huh so when p3d version 5.1 came out active sky evidently did not work with p3d version 5 because hi-fi couldn't get their program to work with p3d right i was using active sky from like in fact, have I still got that video on? I was using Active Sky from the, the, the day P3D version 5.1 came out. I do still have that video. And you'll see here, see a lot of right? I think you need to... You'll see here that it works fine. Okay, let me skip ahead. Um, so, yeah, I've got Active Sky working with Rex in the sky at the moment. And it works absolutely fine. Not a problem. The reason was is because my Active Sky wasn't in charge of the weather. Okay, I only use Active Sky to access Cloud Art, and that is it. It doesn't do anything else. So all my weather was absolutely fine. All my clouds were absolutely fine. Um, it's because Rex Skyforce was handling the weather and not Active Sky, so it didn't bother me if. If the Active Sky program w wasn't working with my sim, because I don't use it for that purpose. So, um, but this is the weather. This is the weather I was getting. This is the first day. This is the first flight of 5.1. This is, and everything was working fine. Now it might display a little bit darker than it actually should, and that is because, um, like my HDR isn't enabled on my TV right now. But it was, and it was running fine at the time. Like, in fact, did I actually, when I saved this video, did I actually show that? Uh, this video, by the way, will be on my YouTube channel uh, next week to watch. Yeah, so as you can see, that it looks fine, the video. The only reason it looked weird just then is because the HDR wasn't work is not active, 
But this is how it actually looked in my sim. And that looks absolutely fine. You don't get dark textures. If your cockpit is too dark... Thank you very much, Captain Michael. If your cockpit is too dark, it's because you've got HDR textures enabled when you're not running HDR in your sim. You need to deactivate HDR in your sim and you need to deactivate it in Chase Plane as well. If you've got a 4K monitor that's got HDR active, then carry on and you won't have a problem. Anyway, you'll be able to watch this video next week on my YouTube channel, guys. I'll, I'll, that's coming out next week. That was that was the very first flight I did in 5.1, and I did not have an issue at all. I've never had an issue with 5.1. The only issue I've ever had is after I did a flight, and I've gone into the menu system of 5.1, I, I can't load it a second time. It doesn't work. Like, watch, I'll show you. Uh, let me shut down, make sure it's fully shut down. Sometimes there's things lying around here. Um, CC cleaner, you don't need to be running, mate. Right. You watch, when I load this up, it should actually show an error. And what I'll have to do is repair my client, my content, and my scenery to fix the error. And that's because I went into the menu system during a flight. It happens to me every time I go into the menu system. And if I try to uninstall the client right now, you can't install Active Sky without... No, sorry, Philip, you can't. Active Sky Cloud Art requires Active Sky to do... to, to be running for it to work. What's that, S? What's SRL, Captain Michael? SRL. I don't know what that means, mate. Yeah, unfortunately, Active Sky has to be running for Active Sky Cloud Art to work. And the reason I use Cloud Art is because I prefer the sky colors, and that's purely it. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, seriously, mate. I mean, seriously, to whatever I, you're referring to. I don't know what you're referring to with the seriously part. But yeah, you have to be running Active Sky for cloud art to work. And my sim will crash, like, will show an error now for going into the menu system. If it doesn't, I'll be surprised as fuck. I'll be like, what? Oh, the reinstallation part. Yeah, so, no, 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 no. I won't have to reinstall, mate. What I'll have to do, sorry. Did I say install, uninstall? What I'll have to do is click on client, repair, content, repair, scenery, repair. And then that will fix that issue. Because what will happen is... I don't know, it happens every time I go into the menu system. When I'm when I'm in my sim and I go and change things into the menu, it 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 does it. And it's only done it in 5.1 to be honest. I I don't know. If it does it now, it's confirmed. If it doesn't do it now, well maybe it isn't that issue and I need to investigate more. But it always does it. On the next startup, I have trouble starting it. Um, also, if, um, guys, you never have to reinstall Windows, by the way. Seriously. I hear people saying, oh, I've got to reinstall P3D and my Windows. You never have to do that, guys. Go to tweaking.com and get this Windows repair tool. This will prevent you from having to reinstall Windows. Because what this will do, it will look through your entire Windows installation and and it will fix whatever's broken with it. It will fix whatever's corrupt with it. It will sort it out. It will re-inject uh, certain drivers that Windows needs or certain applications that Windows needs. It will basically, it's like doing a fresh install, but it, you don't have to delete any files or remove anything or lose any work. 
you just run that go through the steps of the free version and it's the same as doing a complete windows reinstallation see there we go access denied okay so now i've got an access denied code and now i have to shut my sim down and i have to reinstall the client and the content and the scenery so i might also do that now to be honest this will also be a good, uh, where did I put it actually? P3D, here it is. This will also be a good um, chance to see if my theory is correct. So let me run through, for those of you who haven't been watching the past couple of days, I've had this error because I've shown people on the stream and I've gone into my menu system, this has happened three days on the trot now, okay? And it's because I'm showing you guys in my menu system, right? But when I go to reinstall the client, this shows as corrupted, okay? And I'm like, oh, what the fuck? And I have to reinstall the entire package again, okay? All right, let's watch this. Um, so I can go to repair. I mean, I should re uninstall and reinstall to be fair. It doesn't touch your add-ons, by the way. When you uninstall P3D, it doesn't touch your add-ons whatsoever. It leaves them installed into your sim. So you can uninstall P3D and reinstall it, and it won't touch any of your add-ons. Okay? Let's get this straight. Active Sky running so it can inject Active Sky Cloud Art into the sim when EA is turned on and Skyforce Weather Engine is controlling the show. Philip, exactly right, mate. That's exactly how I run my weather. See, installer has encountered an unexpected error. So I now have to un I have to delete this off now. I have to uninstall it. So I uninstall this one, and it's because Windows corrupts the client, I think. I think something goes on with the Windows client. And then I have to reinstall this. Now, in the past, when this has happened, and I've gone to reinstall the client, the client shows that it's corrupted. And I'm like, what? It's not corrupted. You installed yesterday just fine. How is it corrupted? But two times in a row, when I was storing this, uh, in, when I was storing these files, oh, ignore that. When I was installing these files, right, on my C drive, it was saying, no, don't want to deactivate. It was saying that this was corrupt, the uh, client, when I went to run the installer, okay? My clouds are foxy. <laughs> Mate, I highly recommend that's the way you run your weather. Honestly, True Sky is amazing um, with Rex. It really is. I cannot wait for them to bring out Skyforce for P3D version 5. Like, I can't wait. I hope it's going to be just as amazing as I've got it now. Right, so I've uninstalled my client. Now, when I run this, in the past, this whole file system was sitting on my C drive, okay? In videos, and it would say it was corrupted every time I ran it. If I run this now, when it says it's corrupted, then I've, I've got to rethink. But if it doesn't say it's been corrupted... It's because Windows corrupts this installation if it's sitting on your C drive. So here we go. Okay, that's what happens. That's what comes up every time I try and run it. So what I have to do is I have to re-download the entire installation. Well, I'm not going to do that, actually. I'm going to delete this one. And I'm actually going to unpack this one. And let's see. I'm going to do a test and let's see if this if this works now. That client that I uninstalled was from this exact installation here. If I run this now, and it's not corrupted, Windows is corrupting the files that are sitting on the system. 
So it's like it's never a good idea to leave your P3D installation sitting on your PC. Put it on a removable drive and un and unplug that drive. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do what I'm doing every time you go into the menu system of P3D during a flight. This is the only issue I face with P3D. I've never had a crashed desktop. I just have a permissions problem getting into P3D. Say la vie, innit? Time are we on? Quarter past nine. Hmm. I got a um, speaking to the um, developers at uh, P3D and they said that they're going to do this they're going to start doing self-help videos for people Active Sky now works with 5.1 doesn't it Philip, Active Sky has always worked with 5.1. The reason that Active Sky has had trouble generating the weather is because Hi Fi Simulations AS Sim Connect has been broke, like with 5.1. They've had to remake it because it's not compatible, like a lot of add ons, with 5.1. As soon as they've done that, it's working again. Why not drop Sky Force and just use Active Sky? Philip, mate, what? What? Because of the clouds look amazing with Direct Sky Force. That's why. Do you mean why not just drop Active Sky? You mean the reason I use Sky Force is because it actually works with um, P3D version five point one, generating the weather, and they it, it's not needed to change anything within its internal structure it still works active sky have had to go back and fix their program to get it working with 5.1 because it didn't work before active sky is needed for the weather radars and planes i don't use p3d um i use uh like i don't use any weather radar like captain sim has a weather radar um and I that works fine. I I've never known that you've had to run Active Sky for it. You're talking about the Weather WX, though, aren't you? The, uh, the Weather WX program, yes, that you need Active Sky for. But the weather program in planes, like Captain Sim has it, and they don't use Weather X, WX, whatever it's called. WX Radar, that's it, yeah. Aerosoft also uses it. I don't fly Airbus, to be honest. I don't know. I fly Boeing. I mean, Active Sky is running on my PC when I'm flying. I do run it, but I use it as an access to the cloud art. Um, I don't really use weather radar in in the in the you know, or do I? I don't know. You have to watch my videos and let me know because I can't remember, mate. How dare you? <laughs> I don't know, man. Usually, the the weather don't change that much on a flight that I've done. So, I get the um, what you call it. I get the report from the destination, and the report from the where the departure airport, and that's all I'm interested in. Like I. I I mean, if I see clouds, I just fly through them. <laughs> We're in a simulator, man. I mean, I know you shouldn't do that. That's totally unrealistic in that. And that's naughty of me, I know that. But um, a lot of these planes don't have weather radars built into them. You have to use that WX radar, which I don't use because well, I've never used it. Like, I do have it, and I could use it, but it just seems more of a ball ache to use than anything You've got to configure it with each plane and then get the gauges thing with Active Sky. And it's like, fuck all that, man. I just want to fly. Do you know what I mean? 
It's a simulator. I'll just... I'll, if I see bad weather, I'll go around. You can always go around. I suppose I should use it for accuracy. You know. Now this takes its time to unpack, doesn't it? So does anybody else have any other questions? Because uh, we'll be coming to the end soon. Like, obviously, you're not going to see the end result of this because I have to restart my PC. And that means the stream dies. So as soon as the stream dies, I'll be restarting my PC, you know. But does anybody else have any questions about their P3D? Or um, tomorrow we're talking about the scenery library and we're talking about add-ons tomorrow. So we're going to go through the order that the scenery library must be in um, and how you can layer XML files within your scenery library. There is a way. And um, how an XML system can actually save your PC from or save your simulator sorry not your pc but save your simulator from lengthy reinstallations i've never had to reinstall p3d version 5 at all i've never had to reinstall um i've never had to i've never had to reinstall uh, any add-ons for p3d version 5 what's the score with the hotfix one for they're gonna make a hotfix um for i don't know I don't know what they need to make a hotfix for because nothing's broken. Probably compatibility, to be honest. Probably something that they know that they forgot to put in 5.1 that they've left out and they need to put it in. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with 5.1, so I don't know what they need to hotfix, to be honest. I know they need a hotfix for Active Sky to work, but that's Active Sky's problem, not Lockheed Martin's. Ah, oh, my GSX needs updating. I might as well run that now. Every time I run this, I've got to go back and I've got to reinstall my files. It's a right pain in the ass. I use um, special files I do. I use these GSX files here for either Jet or Ramp. Um, we're going to go with Ramp. So all these are special you know, the special files, whatever. And every time I run this bloody updater, I've got to re-put them in. So, we are, where are we? Add-on manager. Uh, Coatl, however you pronounce that. GSX, sounds. There we go. I'll reinstall them when this is finished. I do have RAAS. Your shit with the XML files, mate. I'll show you how to make one. Um, I'll show you my XML files. I XML everything, mate, honestly. This is my XML directory. This, so all of these are through XML. All of these files. All my airports. All my uh, aircraft. They're all through XML. And honestly, it's like... It's pretty easy once you know how. Um, but it's knowing how. And you have to get the encoding right as well. Because if that's wrong, it'll screw up your entire sim. But uh, I'll go through the whole process in a future um, thing. But tomorrow we're going to talk about add-ons and scenery library. I do have RAAS and that works fine as well. Any add-on that's um, an audio fix, like an audio add-on, will work fine. It doesn't... Uh... All right, let's, let's copy over and paste these over. Copy... Paste and replace. That's that sorted. Actually, I, do you know what, Phil? I have actually done videos on my YouTube channel about how to make XML files and how to create them with uh, an aircraft and stuff like that. So I'd probably just check out that video. Just put an empty file called... Don't update in your... What? G 
just put an empty file called don't update in your Coatl. And when you run the live updater, those custom... May I don't like me messing with certain files. I mean, you're asking me to change a file from GSX. That's like opening the doorway to hell, isn't it? I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a big fan, unless I know what I'm doing. I'm not a big fan of changing configuration files. Um, unless I know what I'm doing. And from what I hear, GSX doesn't run at the best of times. I've never had an issue with GSX. It's not a massive problem doing that, but... So, hang on, what's this? Uh, in your Coatl GSX sounds... Ah, oh, so what you're saying is rename the file here or something. I mean, I, what I could do is I could just change the name of this file... See, okay, so the issue is, right, Aviator, mate, I know what you're saying. I, I, I know what you're saying, okay? But the problem is, what if some of these sounds are replaced and need to be replaced? I mean, well, I, I'm going to replace them anyway, so what does it matter, I suppose? I don't know. Just put a text file in that folder. Really? Put, put a text file in here, and it says, don't update. And then it won't update these files. That's it. I don't know. I'll try it, but. You're not seeing yours, but have watched others and they're a bit confusing. Uh, yeah, go check mine out there. It's, it'll probably be under a P3D version four help playlist. Um, but it's definitely there. Um, I, I XML'd the DC3 in that video. And it's so much easier when you're dragging and dropping these files here. Like, this is my Birmingham airport, and if I don't want my Birmingham airport in, I just delete it off, and then it's no longer in my sim. And it doesn't affect any of my sim. It's explained in the F... Oh, so it... That's something from them, is it? I'll, uh, I'll I'll have a look at the forum and I'll check it out. But thank you, Aviator, for letting me know. That's going to save me a ton of bloody having to keep on putting them back in every time. From um, what's yeah? What what is his name? Umberto. Yeah. I'll have a look at that, mate. Yeah, I'll have a look at that. And for everybody who's watching and who isn't actually talking, you know, welcome. Thank you for watching. I appreciate um, you're, you're watching. Everybody who's got me on, on the side and they're doing something else, you know. Thank you. You also have custom sounds and they are left alone. Yeah, I have custom sounds. I'll try that. I'll, I'll, I will try that. I'll, I'll check the forum first, though, just to see if, you know, there's any feedback on it. But thank you for that, Aviator. I appreciate that. That's a good tip, that is. Because sometimes I have to go to another hard drive for him. Right, come on, mate. Three minutes left. Bloody hell. I hope I don't have to re-download the whole file. Take care, Aviator, mate. Get the lap dancer on. <laughs> hey, I had some chocolate around here. Where did that go? Did I eat it all? Fuck. Hey, Speedy Birdie, how's it going, mate? Long time no see. I'm all right, I'm all right. Just general simulator stuff, you know. How are you? <laughs> I 
I don't know if it's the same speedy birdie, Phil. If that's who you're ref you're referring to, somebody sp sp particular. So I think their name is Speedbird. Is everybody having fun with the lockdown? Right. In tomorrow's video, by the way, guys, I'm not going to be going into the menu system during a flight. That's so... When we go into a flight, that will be it. I'm not... I'm not having to do this every time. It's just... It's a, it's a pain in the ass, to be honest. I'm having to do this because of showing people in the menu system. Do you know what I mean? You're planning to do your LAPL next year. Good luck, mate. Good luck for it. Enough now. Huh? You're right, Phil, mate. Good luck with the... L Hang on. What's an LAPL? I've never heard of LAPL. I mean, that's not a license for flights, is it? Landing <laughs> autopilot license or something? I don't know. Where's the LAPL, mate? Yeah, I know I just lost a, asked about lockdown. Oh, you don't want to talk about lockdown. Oh, okay, fair enough, mate. Light aircraft pilot license. Ah. Like um, those little one engine things, yeah? I'm with you now. I've got you. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Now, does that include that thing in the water when you... And it, the water is jetting you around? Because that, that goes airborne. That could be considered light aircraft, couldn't it? Does that include that? Right then, let's see if it corrupts again. Shock horror, it didn't. So basically, leaving this on your computer corrupts the installation. Confirmed. This is the third time I've done this. Literally, the same file has just come off. So if I leave these files on my PC, even if it's on a different D drive... Windows will nuke it. Windows will just completely wreck it. For some reason, Windows does not like these files. Uh, Microsoft are trying to fuck with P3D, mate. There's a war between Lockheed Martin and P3D. Uh, Lockheed Martin and Microsoft. I'm telling you guys, it's confirmed now. The same thing has happened. Anyway, I'll do the content... Um, I can't repair it. I have to uninstall it. Fuck. I have to uninstall. I have to uninstall the content and the scenery because repairing is just going to crash it again. LAPL and PPL aren't the same thing, are they? You've had enough of lockdown already, Phil. Sorry to hear that, mate. Sorry to hear that. APL for airplanes will allow you to act as a pilot in command. On two classes of aircraft, either a single-engine piston airplane or touring motor glider, with a maximum takeoff mass of 2,000 kilograms or less, carrying a maximum of three passengers. Does that include yourself? With no more than four persons on board. That does. That doesn't include yourself. So it's you and three others. Right, so Speedy Birdie, when are you taking us all around the country, mate? Yeah? Me, you, Phil... And it was the other dude here. Captain Michael, was it? Aviator 79. He left. He, he's he's not going to get on board. Hey, guys. War of the Sims. Mate, tell me about it. Do you guys... Would you guys like a career mode with flight simulation?
Like with P3D, would you guys like a career mode? Let me know. Yes or no? Because I I have your answer. You don't even know. Not you, Loxley, mate. You don't do flight simulation. You Loxley, you you don't have to worry. You're always on board my planes, okay? You're greased in, mate, okay? You're fine. You you're fine. You you're in the back all the time. If you're a follower on on Twitch of my channel, Everybody's a first-class passenger on my planes that I fly. So, you don't want you don't want a career mode, Phil, in flight simulation. Come on, mate, what's going on? Well, for anybody who does want a career mode in flight simulation, I have the answer for you. Let me show you, okay? While this is installing, in my Discord, if you hop into my Discord. You will be welcomed, okay, by a robot, okay? Dave's done it, and so is Midger. And I'm hoping Midger's watching now. But yeah, everybody everybody who joins in my Discord, if you go to the rules section, right, and you click this airplane, you immediately begin a career mode. Phil, it takes no time at all, mate, okay? If you're going to be in my Discord asking for help, about your simulator or just generally chatting with me and everybody else then you're going to level up in my discord right because when you click this airplane you'll become a flight sim pilot okay we've got some flight sim pilots here i'm sure here we go here ben e dog pitta venny simmer they're all flight sim pilots okay and if you if you subscribe to me my youtube channel okay or you follow me on twitch you become a first class passenger just like artistico okay and every time i do a flight which i'll be doing on monday in my discord i have an actual tv channel here where you can click on here right where is it you can click on here and you can you can you can join me here right and I actually stream in this channel, okay? And I'm going to be streaming this Monday a flight in Flight Sim, okay? And you can come and join me in this channel. And you guys can watch and hear. The Discord link is down below in the description box, Phil. As soon as you become a first-class passenger, you're on board the plane. I'm flying you guys around, right? But it doesn't stop there, right? Speedy Bird's in here. Look, he's playing Google Chrome. <laughs> he's, he's playing Google Chrome. Look at that. That's ace. Um, but yeah, so you, you become a, a first uh, class passenger. The more you chat in my Discord, right? The more you chat, the more you interact, you actually level up, right? And you can check your level by going to rank here. MS, let's see what level he's at. Ralph, he's on level three. Everyone else isn't loading. I'm on level 11 now. Let's see what level I'm on. Let me check my level. MS is on level 6. How far have I proceeded from level 11? I did this level 11. When did I do this? On the 10th, uh, 20th of October. So we'll see what level I'm on. Sir Carlos is on level 4. Okay. I'm still on level 11. Okay. Right. Well, when you get to level 25, uh, sorry, when you get to level 50, you become a member of the cabin crew, right? And what happens is when we're in crews, the cabin crew get to come in the flight deck and we actually chat. And basically what that means is then we go in the actual uh, chatting room and we actually can talk to each other during the flight of the, of the uh, f you know, during the flight. Um, just the cruise flight though. That's it. Then as soon as we come in into landing, you guys get kicked out the uh, the voice channel and I land the plane, right? But you can fast track to become a cabin crew member by subbing to me on Twitch, but you don't have to do that. And don't please do that. Um, but when you get to level 70, you become a first officer, guys, and we actually go through checklists together, okay? So, um, you, you know... 
So I'll be on the flight. You'll have your checklist and you'll say, like, turn the battery on, do this, and I'll go check. And we'll actually be like a first officer and our captain. It's so much fun. It's so much more fun. But the best thing is now, when you reach the level of captain, we do shared cockpits together. Okay? And we fly around live on stream in a shared cockpit. And we actually act out first officer and captain. Okay, so I can't wait for somebody to reach the captain level. I really can't. I hope somebody gets there soon. Because I, I really want to do a shared cockpit. Obviously, we both have to have the plane, you know. So, anyway. Guys, this is going to take some time because I have to do the scenery after I do the content. And this, I have to do this to fix that issue. Um, and then obviously restart my sim and then that that little that little bug is fixed but um, that bug is only because I go into my menu system during a flight and start changing things on the fly which I don't think you should do anyway you're right Ben how's it going I saw you in my discord then I think we're just about to wrap things up here you got a cup and some snacks as you surf through, surf the Google Chrome, I've I've run out of drink here. Got nothing left, mate. Me other mug as well is empty. I gotta go. I gotta go get a drink. The only snacks I've got are the popcorn from the cinema. I'm working my way through it. You joined the Discord, but you've been binge watching my YouTube. Oh, thank you, Ben. Ben, you. Thank you very much, mate. You really, you know, supporting me. Watching my stuff helps me out, by the way. Okay, really, more than you ever know, to be honest. It really does help me out. I'm in a temporary location at the moment. So, um, I'll be leaving here probably in February to get my own place. So, all the support really does help me at the moment. So thank you for watching my videos. I hope you find fun in them. I, I mean, I do some gaming vids as well, but on Twitch... Oh, guys. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to make your own island? Like, make it whatever you want? I've been doing that all day today on Twitch, and I'll be doing it tomorrow as well. Honestly, it's such a good game. I love it. It keeps me entertained while working away from home. Oh, you're working away from home. Healthcare worker, no way during the week and then I get itchy about not being able to fly until weekends oh man I bet you love your weekends don't you Ben oh mate I'll be back to doing flights live on Twitch in the new year by the way um, I'll be doing flights live in Discord and all through lockdown and all until next year so every Monday join me in Discord and you'll be able to see me fly and chat to me as well. You'll actually be able to chat to me. Um, every Monday. Noon till 6. So we'll do 6 hour flights. I need some. I need to go. I need to fly somewhere. Do you know what I mean? I've got. I'll even dress up for you guys. Look. I'll even dress up for you. You're not sure the girlfriend's too happy about you flying. Why? She occasionally jumps on the radio for me. <laughs> mate, girlfriend and boyfriend flight. That's ace. That's ace, mate. But yeah, I, I'll get dressed up in my shirt. In my first officer shirt there. Do it all properly. Do you know what I mean? I went out and got all of these um, epaulets. So I got... Um, and this is for the career mode that I do. So I've got Captain's Epulets, right? Nothing wrong with them. They look fine. <sighs> then I got these. Elton John's Epulets, these are. Fucking check that out. They're from Elton John, they are. Bloody stripes two and three. They're all glittery. Bloody bullshit waste of time. <laughs> oh, shit. That hit the escape button. Honestly, mate, honestly. I mean, the ones I've got on are just one stripe because at the moment in my career mode that I'm doing in virtual pilot life, 
Um, I'm on a one stripe. I'm a trainee first officer in my in my uh, career mode. So as soon as I get up to captain, I can start wearing the four stripes. How's the? Oh wait, our Friday and Saturday nights are generally flying related housework during the day, and then the night time. How's the? I've, but, been going this evening. Eh? Oh, the live stream. Gotcha, sorry. Gotcha. How's live stream? Well, the live stream's going good. Like, you know, a few people have have been helped, and uh, I'm glad that they've sorted their issues out. And, I'm, and I'll be waiting to hear back on another one. What did I do? The content, then. i got to install the content. But, um... Other than that, yeah, it's just, um... It's just about to end, to be honest, mate. I'm about to shut it down now. It's quarter to ten. Finally sorted your dark 737 cockpit. Needed an update on the NGXU. Hey, Ben, do you have a 4K TV, mate? Do you, did your flight sim use a 4K HDR-enabled TV? I mean, I'm glad you got it sorted. And you'll probably say yes to that now. HDR is off on the TV. Got the widescreen, if you remember. So if your HDR is turned off, then is it disabled in the simulator as well? Because that's all the update from the NGXU would be, is to disable the... It is off in the sim. Oh, right, okay. So the, all they've done is disabled the HDR in their airplane as well, then. Fair enough. Right, uh, scenery. We're going to go with repair with scenery. See what happens. Content should be back in there now. Not happy with the enhanced atmospheric at the moment. Waiting for Rex to come out. Ben, have you not been watching, mate? Ben, when this stream finishes, rewatch. Like, seriously, mate. Rex, right now, with it, you know, True Sky is amazing. Seriously, mate. It truly is. You just joined the Discord, mate. But you're not sure. <laughs> Let's have a look, shall we? Uh, I'm guessing you're Bayer, Beige 100. Is that you there, mate, Phil? Bayer, Jack Bauer, J100. <laughs> if that's got to be Jack Bauer, that has. Are you a fan of 24, Philip? You've been on VATSIM all evening. Have you been controlling on VATSIM, mate? No way. Hey, look, Venny's playing P3D. And Turtle Gamer is sleeping, it says. That's ace. Oh, hello. My friends are playing Escape from Tarkov. I'll have to go join them. Europe control has been mental. Just doing short let you <laughs> my life. Do you know what it is, right? Oh, that's done now. Right, so that's that's now fixed. Now I have to restart my PC, guys, so the stream's gonna end. But um do you know why it's been mental, mate? Bloody Kenko, I bet. Flying with his buddies, innit? Every when he where, wherever Kenko flies, he takes about twenty people with him because everybody loves him. I love him. Everybody loves him. He's ace. But yeah, I reckon it's the streamers doing the rounds of Europe. That's why it goes mental, isn't it? <laughs> They're all legends. Dedicated to the cause of flights. I love it. Mate, how come I can't draw a square on my on my monitor? Whoa, what's going on? What the fuck? 
I can't draw a square here on my monitor. Look at that. Um, hello. Something's wrong with my my monitor, by the way. That's you, is it, Jack Bauer one hundred? Nice talking to you, Ben, mate. You watch this uh, back after. I'll be all right tomorrow, guys. I'll be live streaming tomorrow, seven p.m. UK time. Right. We're going to go through the scenery library. I'm going to show you what order everything has to be in and the different ways that you can have your scenery installed into the sim. You can either do it through your scenery library or you can have it installed as like XML. But there are certain things you can't do with XML that you shouldn't do either. Okay. And we're going to go through all that. Having XML in your sim saves you from really lengthy installations. But it's tricky because it's not naturally run that way. Tomorrow, we're going to go through all of that. Okay. So, and then we'll possibly do a little flight as well. Like, a, we'll do a proper flight um, in a plane. <laughs> in a plane. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go now. My throat's killing me. And um, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any issues with your P3D... You know, you're going to hold me to the flight. No worries. We'll do that. We'll do that. If you've got any issues with your P3D tomorrow, come ask me questions. Um, hopefully, I think it was uh, Robin uh, had some issues. Was it Robin? Robbie. And hopefully they'll be sorted tomorrow. I get some feedback off that. Loxley, Ben, Phil, and everybody who's lurking, Take care, guys. I'm going to see you tomorrow. One quick question. Do I use Tabaret Night Lighting? Tabaret? Who the hell's that? Hey, I've got to look this up. I have. He's got me looking up stuff now. I don't use that at all, mate. I'm sorry. I use Black Marble because they're amazing. To be honest, that looks like ass. In all honesty, that looks shit, mate. I'm very sorry if they're your friends or anything like that, but let me show you pictures of my night lighting. My night lighting is amazing, and I'm, you know, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, to be honest, but it's, that's not very clear, is it? Go check out the, oh, uh, oh, hang on, in the video, in the video. There's a video coming out on my YouTube channel soon, next week. And I'm pretty sure I landed that in the night time. Look at this night lighting, guys. Watch this. Black marble, by the way, is the best night lighting you're ever going to see. And I tell you this now, Orbex, their night lighting was created by Chris Bell. Okay? It was a free download years ago that they took and repurposed for their sim or for their their add-ons black marble and if you get extended lights black marble it will actually give you a frame boost you can actually run more lights it's weird you got do you know what you guys get this this is coming out next week you guys watch this landing though this is ace i'm going to disable my camera so you can see this Just watch this. This is so funny. Where does Black Marble install to? It installs both inside your scenery library and outside. I, I'll go through a Black Marble um, whole thing on the live stream if you want. We'll do that the day after. Yeah, the main directory, yeah. But also outside of the main directory. It's a bit complicated, by the way, guys. It's a bit complicated. What's your little issue, Phil, with black marble? You, you wait till I turn to land, guys, honestly. Older night lighting. Don't know about that.
Oh, do you mean Orbex? Sorry. They also have separate night environmental packs. Yes, I've got the British Isles one, which I should have activated for when we did that flight just then. I never did. Um, I've got the Alps. Chris Bells gave me that. And California. California, I can't wait to see that. This is my dodgy landing, this is, guys. Yeah, let's turn it up so you can hear it, man. Terrain, terrain, pull up. Uh oh. Do you have to have the separate regions? Standard base covers the entire. Look at that. Look at that night lighting, guys. That's what you get with black marble right there. Yeah? Forget that turbel stuff. Just forget that, mate. Black Marble Base is good enough for the entire globe. And then you can extend that with Vector, which I highly recommend. Right? Get Vector. Get Bridges. That's optional. But get Bridges. And get Extended Lights. Seriously, mate. If you get Extended Lights and, and activate Night Boost, it gives you a, a FPS um, boost. It actually improves performance. Seriously, it's it's freaky. How do you get no stutters in the 737 at night? I'm amazing. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. I, I guys, serious. By the way, I the performance I get. This is when I'm recording, and I'm getting 30 FPS. The reason I get this is because everything I show you guys, okay. Everything, there's no strain on my system, okay? Um, because I manage it, I manage my GPU, I manage my CPU, and I haven't told you this, but I manage my memory as well. I've actually added, let me see if I can show you. I've actually added a optimizer for my memory to clear the cache, right? Every five to 10 minutes, so it doesn't build up and destroy my system. So it deletes the cache every five minutes, right? That one is a great performance boost for the sim, okay? All the tips that I talk about in this stream, in yesterday's stream, in tomorrow's stream, help me maintain my frame rate and give you what you see here. That's it, the task schedule one. That's it, mate. Sync rate. Approaching two, three... It's gorgeous, man. Pull up. Mate, yeah, pull up so we can see the lights. Isn't it? That's what the plane's saying. The plane wants me to pull up so we can see the night lighting. If you go back and watch all my videos for P3D, guys, you'll have the same setup as me. I always tell everything. Well, here we go. This is it, guys. This is it. Uh-oh. Missed the runway. <laughs> Missed the runway. You're working from home, Andre. Uh oh. Whoopsie on the landing, innit? Stargazer as well. Yes, Stargazer. Yes. It's left contact ground control on one two one decimal four. I'll answer that in a second, Phil. Anyway, you can watch that full video next week on my on YouTube. This tar 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 bay, just forget it, mate. It's not worth it. Um, right, Phil. Yes. Okay. This is the thing. Black Marble is your is the best night lighting system you'll ever see in P3D, okay? It is the best, seriously. And not only is it the best, let me show you this. I'm going to show you three of these managers, okay? This is what you get when you get Black Marble. Flush Direct X Cache has prevented that many crash to desktops for me it's worth it for that alone okay 
There's also an inbuilt scenery index rebuilder. So if your scenery file is a little bit eh, you can re-index the entire thing and it will fix it. Flush your DirectX cache every time you install a scenery. Honestly, this them two features alone are worth this add-on. Now, there's a thing with the Orbex way of doing things, right? Orbex... Oh, I need to unpin that and repin that. Orbex, whenever you sync your simulator, by the way, guys, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but every time you sync your simulator with Orbex, it changes the terrain CFG encoding for whatever un for whatever reason, right? It changes it. It alters it to something else from what it should be set to. And it actually nukes the uh, terrain CFG file. Like if you go in to open it, you've wrecked your simulator and you've got to uninstall everything and reinstall it again. And it's because of that terrain CFG encoding. So anytime I sync my simulator with Orbex, I have to open up Black Marble and refresh the terrain CFG encoding, right? So I always have my Activate Night Boost on at all times. This control panel is crucial for stability in P3D version 5. Honestly, I you've got to get it. Um, extended lights. Okay. Whenever you run extended lights, it changes your night lighting completely. I use business class. This is always turned on, by the way. Which What's a bit unstable, Philip? I'm going to answer your question that you asked about the support in a second, Phil, okay? But what do you mean, bit unstable? Do I use EA as well? Yes, Andre, I use full true sky in 5.1. It's amazing. It's not rubbish. It's amazing. And if you go back in my videos, you'll see. In fact, here, Andre, this is for you, mate. I'll show you that video again. This video is coming out on my um, channel on YouTube, guys. I see a lot of I think this is with True Sky enabled, okay? That's True Sky enabled. Out there is True Sky. Honestly, it's amazing. This is all True Sky. But it's also with Rex doing it. Look at that. Look at that, guys. That just looks real to me. It looks like I'm watching a just plain flight video, doesn't it? That's amazing. That that looks real. That's true sky, guys. Seriously. I could watch this all day, seriously. Anyway, sorry, getting off track here. I have extended lights turned on all the time, okay? Uh, not that one, this one. This profile manager is the best add-on for flight simulation. Oh, I've got to deactivate that before I can run it. Okay. Let me deactivate extended lights so I can run this. This, this, uh, this thing that I'm about to show you guys, by the way, is the best add-on in, in any flight simulator because of the control it gives you. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a whole live stream on Black Marble again. I already did a live stream where Chris came in and we went through a few things. We flew around Las Vegas and we actually created a profile um, with the program, a specific profile for night lighting. Go back and watch that live stream. It is four hours long, but it's amazing because Chris came in and we all chatted it out. And why have I got an apple in front of me? The fuck is that coming from? Um, it honestly was. Now, Phil, you asked about the, the support, right? The thing with Black Marble is when you buy their product, you get one year's free support with it. That's what you pay for. You pay for the product and the support. Now, the support gives you access to the forums, to a one-to-one -one discussion with the developer, Chris Bell, who made the product, okay? You get to have him walk you through stuff. Okay, 
I want to talk about this in a second. But he actually... Uh, oh, my landing was a bit <laughs> unstable. Sorry. Yeah, I got you, Phil. Um, he, he will walk you through your sim and he will say, dude, you've got problems in your sim you don't even know about. Okay. And he will fix your simulator. Seriously. It's a one-to-one -one support with developer. Um, but after the first year, you do have to pay for that support because it's an ongoing thing. It also gives you access to download updates. Now you don't need the support to download um, your product. You will always have access to that and you can download your product, not a problem. But if the product changes, like in 5.1, we went into an update from 5.0 and Chris issued a update when we went from 4.5 to 5.0 and he issued an update. So it required that you had to have your support active in order to get that the, the the update you could still download your products though even if you didn't have your support active you just couldn't update them the update like the support sorry is like i pay my support and it costs me like 20 pounds a year for all my black marble products it's totally worth it guys honestly because Chris, you can message Chris, talk to him. He will come back to you and fix your sim if it's broken. A lot of the things with Black Marble have actually fixed my sim problems. And it's the best night lighting ever, guys, honestly. This, this uh, Black Marble night environment product here, you can actually define how the night lighting um, is in your sim. You can actually create your own profiles Honestly, it's such a good tool, but it's so, like, it gives you so much power over your sim because you can actually place the lights in particular places. You can design roads to do this, to do that, to look like any color. Honestly, like, you have, like, this This is the this is the, um, the type of lights you have available to you, um, and you can use any one of these... In your sim so if you want all blue lights in your sim you can have it if you want all green lights you can do it and you can put those lights wherever you want honestly this is the best add-on guys ever we will do another live black marble stream I'll contact Chris again maybe he'll join again Let me turn extended lights back on oh it's nukes me thing I gotta hang on Those are the settings I have, and I have extended lights on even during the day. It gives you a massive performance increase when you have extended lights. I seriously, you've contacted him, he's watching. <laughs> Hi, Chris. <laughs> seriously, it's, um, and P3D 5.1, by the way, Chris is watching, okay. Hi, Chris. Um, P3D 5.1. Hey, there he is. <laughs> P3D 5. Chris, by the way, I was meaning to message you this, right? B Black Marble looks even more amazing in 5.1. Honestly, it looks more amazing now than 5.0. Like, whatever P3D have done to their sim, they've improved the way the night looks like uh, combined with your settings combined with the settings that you you said in the cfg file the night lighting it looks amazing again like i think you're even you'll be happy with it now um but yeah we were talking about maybe doing a another live stream on on black marble they've broken it for a while and it's back it's fixed it finally mate we're going to be doing so many night flights coming up. Definitely get your support, Phil. Definitely get your support, mate. Stargazer is totally worth it over that weird thing they've got in their default sim. I don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo -woo. Exactly, mate. Three, four dollars for a whole year. It's a no-brainer, mate. It's a no-brainer. You know, 
Maybe Chris will start setting up competitions to win support for a year. You know what I mean? Hey, Chris. <laughs> Somebody asked a question before and I didn't get to it. I have all black marble stuff and love it. Just a problem downloading Stargazer. Get your support sorted. You won't have a problem. Seriously need to spend some time investigating. And I thought Rex was not yet supported. It isn't yet supported for 5.1, but it works in 5.1. I use it and it makes the true sky look more amazing than active sky does. Seriously, get for it. First year. Yeah, that's it. You get your first year free. Yeah. And then pay for another year at 50% off. There you go. 50% off, man. It's totally worth it. I, I, I pay mine. It's totally worth it. Because not only do you get your the fantastic night lighting, but Chris, one-to-one, -one, sorts out not only whatever issue you've got with night lighting, but then goes, by the way, did you know your sim is broke as well? And you go, no, I didn't realize this. And he goes, yeah this is broken and this will fix it and then you do that and everything and it's like and, and it's working and you go i didn't even know about that mate honestly that's how good the products are they tell you about problems you don't even know you've got <laughs> it is the best support honestly i you don't get any like support like that i go to just flight and it's some random dude who hasn't even made the up the uh the add-on who gets back to me um you go to GSX and it's like their it's their support guy who isn't one of the developers. Um, UK two thousand. I mean, well, I've just I've just forgotten about them to be honest. <laughs> we all honestly we all love you, mate. But you you can you can tell when when Chris has had a a long day with helping people on the chat. On the forums and that, because <laughs> you know, you you can just tell when he's had a long day with people in the forums. To be able to download Stargaze for five point one, I need to purchase. Yeah, just go. Yeah, just get the support. If you if your support isn't there, if there if there has been an update, it won't download the update. But you can still download your original. Obviously, you've bought it, you you get it, but you just don't get access to the future update. And the, the update, I think, is if you've got your support going at the time we went into five, your update was free. You didn't need to pay for it at all. It was absolutely free. Totally worth it. Which reminds me, I need to activate the British Isles uh, in my scenery file. Anyway, guys, tomorrow we're talking about the scenery library. Chris, cover your ears. We're talking about XML files, okay? Uh, and what order your scenery library should be in. Um, what day are we on today? Sunday today, isn't it? Right, so Monday we're talking about the scenery library. Tuesday, we're going to talk, we're going to do a Black Marble special again, okay? Chris, if you're on board, if you want to join in, mate, you're more than welcome to come in again. And But we're going to do a nighttime flight on Tuesday. Um, We're going to do it in Los Angeles. We're going to do it in LA, mate, because LA has the best lighting. <laughs> that city lights up like Christmas. So we're going to do it in Los Angeles, I've got to go as well. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. And if anybody has any issues with 5.1, please don't you know, don't be afraid to ask or anything like that. We'll we'll I'll help you. We'll get you flying again. And um, thank you for watching tonight. And I'll say take care, everybody. Okay. And um, I'll see everybody tomorrow. Okay. Loxley, take care, mate. Ben, Chris, Aviator, Phil. And all the lurkers, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.